Yeah. Is this better? Yeah, it looks better. It's a little more better. Let me make sure. Oh, well, we're live. We're live? Yeah, we're live, right. like right out of the gate. Awesome. Shit, you guys were waiting for us. How, how's our audio? We coming in good? Is Can you hear Paul? Paul will say something Hello. in a minute. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Let me, uh, I'm sorry, guys. We had a little bit of a uh, snafu Snafu with uh, some traffic. Welcome. We'll get right to it, but I want really quick before we get to it, I want to make sure that we've got good audio. Sounds good. Okay, Paul. Give me. Yes, sound good? Does Paul sound good? That's Paul. But can you hear him well? Can you hear me okay? I'm going to lower that camera down because we're like looking down at ourselves. Can you see the top of the computer? I cannot. See. Yes, I can see the top of the computer. Okay. Might be a problem. How about now? That's better. Just yeah. like a little sliver of it. Just How about now? Not at all. Awesome. I think we're back where we started. <laughs> 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 all right. Charlie says we're back. Where all we right. Started. So you can hear both of us. We're, we're, we're ready to go. So last time we did this, talk to you guys, and I suppose it probably helpful if we look at that camera as we're talking. We talked to you guys about what you didn't, you didn't see it, Paul. Uh, we kind of did. Did you watch it? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Why do you think I don't watch your stuff? Well, I mean, it was during, it was like 6.30 at night. You. So by the way, Paul had somebody else take one of his classes tonight so he could be here. So you'll have to make sure you follow and like his stuff to say thank you. And my guys, they're awesome. They jumped in and uh, took over classes for me so I could I could jet to get up here. That's awesome. So, yeah. Which we can talk a little bit about that. And then he came repping our shirt, which is super cool. Been wearing it all day. It looks good on you. I know. Yeah, it does. So we we you did watch it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I so, watch different. Yeah, I watch all your stuff. What are you talking about? Well, that's I mean not all of it. All of it. All of it. I consume it. Hi, Robert. Paul is difficult to hear, says Jeffrey. I can bubbling your gain up. My gain? My talk gain. to them a little bit. Gain. Can you guys hear me okay? I tend to not talk to not talk loud enough unless You're I'm like loud talker Yeah, like unless I'm like talking to a class or something. Not a loud talker not like a me. Loud talker. So how does he sound now? Over. How does he sound now? Well, you can move this to your face. This will move. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Sorry, guys. We could have done all of this beforehand, but we didn't. But I was running late. <laughs> it's my fault. I was running so late. All right. You can hear us both. So yeah. Paul sounds like Beowulf. Marco, what does Beowulf sound like? Yeah. What does he sound like? Okay. Shitty phones. Okay. So maybe that's somebody's audio. All right. We're going to go. We're going to go. Because if we just keep sitting here doing sound checks and stuff, you know, doesn't if you guys can't hear it, doesn't Yeah. Matter. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter. There's a joke. So we talked last time about uh, concepts and ideas and uh, theories for making one a better instructor. I had a podcast down here yesterday and dude wanted to sit like where this was at, like neck height. So I dropped down to his level. I like it. And now I'm going to get it back up. Get it back up there. So we could easily start with some questions from you dudes. We could start with... Uh, a thought of our own, you know, this kind of a discussion is one of those things that it's not something that you just do and then it's done because, you know, how long you've been teaching people stuff? 96. So I was two. (laughs) (laughs) I love those guys. I love those guys. There's always one of those guys. 96 though. So that's, uh, like you're talking, you're pushing 30 years yeah. that you've been teaching yeah. people. Get and and not to to be clear, not like solo act teaching. But, but so, where you had the responsibility of it. Yeah, yeah. So like to, like my guys tonight, like mm-hmm. teaching classes um, and that kind of thing. So since 90, 95, 96, I've been teaching some form of martial art, fighting skill, combatives, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So, yeah, in some form or or fashion i've been either teaching in classes or i think my first seminar was in 99 mm. so yeah gotcha. so, so a, long, a long enough time that there's a body of knowledge that we can draw on. so those of you that don't know him paul's a black belt in brazilian jiu-jitsu uh 
long time, what, 30 years, 25 years in law enforcement? Yeah, 20, yeah 22. 22 years in law enforcement. Uh, you've done boxing, MMA. Yeah, kickboxing. Kickboxing. Wrestling, judo, jiu-jitsu, a little bit of everything. Try to test the waters everywhere, you know? You're one of the uh, ShivWorks crew, which is you and Craig Douglas and William April and Cecil Birch and Larry Lindemann and uh, Chris. Chris uh, yeah, Chris Fry. Uh, Chris Fry. Yeah. And it's like a collective of, yeah. of minds for the total development. Of, yeah. Yeah. Just kind of like guys that kind of had the same mindset, same, uh, we we're kind of on the same path. And so we just would bounce ideas off each other. And what would you do if this happened? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this guy tried to hit me with his car. And uh, yeah, so it was a, yeah, it was kind of a hive or a, uh, I guess the, cool word now is mastermind, mastermind group or something you know yeah, where mastermind. guys kind of all get together and just kind of run it down and see where we're at and see what's working and what's not and and also it, over the years it grew into like a personal thing where everybody kind of did that we kind of took that same approach to personal lives as well where you just you know um keep each other in line keep each other on track or just be there for each other so it became Started out as a fighting thing and then became a life thing. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, you guys are all buddies. You work together. You support each other's individual businesses. Yeah, yeah, and then you sure. do things together. Yeah, kind of like me and you. Peanut butter and jelly. I like peanut butter and honey sandwiches. You peanut butter, those. honey? peanut. Oh, Jeff Blueman. Guy, he has a company called Arm Dynamics. He's a really cool dude. Um, he actually won that Super Soldier TV show back in the day. Oh, really? Yeah, he was one of those guys. He never served in the military. Scott never did any Puckett. of that stuff. Remember him from S12? He did it. He same was thing. On that show. Yeah, yeah, same show. Um, so Jeff Blueman, I taught a class in Philadelphia, and I stayed at Blueman's house, and he brought food. He's like, I got lunch. I got it taken care of. I'm like, okay. you know. So he brings lunch, and it was Nutella. Mm which I never got into before. I was always kind of like, ah, I don't know about that. You know, it's not peanut butter. So I never wanted to give it a shot. So, but I was hungry. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I ate it. So I ate it. So it was Nutella, <laughs> um, bananas, cut up bananas, peanut butter, and honey. My mom made those as kids. Man. That's good stuff. And then somebody told me you can fry them. Mm, like a grilled that. cheese. That would be that's good. That's really good. That, that and then you good. glaze the honey. Which you could do because you're like that's a cook like kind of almost guy. like a that's like a dessert. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. See, you could rock that, dude. Because well, we you're like a those. cook. I can't do we that. Should, you could do that. We should. I'm not try a good that. cook, man. I think you are. Uh, I mean, cereal. I, I, mean, I, I make the heck out of a bowl of cereal. Hey, Billy. So you, that's 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 your best. That's probably my best. Would be oatmeal. I'm good at oatmeal and uh, Count Chocula. Count Chocula with uh, chocolate almond milk or chocolate soy milk. Good stuff. Good I'm stuff. I'm reading your guy's comments as he's talking about his Count Chocula <laughs> mm, warm banana. Warm Ro- banana. So during so warm during one bananas. of our classes, Robert was in our last class in Florida, and we had a young man talk to us about that hey, self pleasure habit <laughs> that required a microwave. <laughs> A banana peel. A banana peel. <laughs> Not the banana. Oh, my God. I was in What are you doing with the banana? It was, I think you ate that. You, you enjoyed banana. that okay, part. Eat yeah. the banana. Yeah. Peanut butter and syrup. Like maple syrup? Okay, let's, we'll get off the food for a minute. How do you deal with a student who, Marco. Marco's a friend of ours, police officer in the state of New York. Hey, Marco. And Marco says, how do you deal with a student who just, won't or doesn't listen to what you're asking them to do. I know exactly what I do. What do you do? What do you do? Yeah, right. Oh man, that's a good one. So um sometimes you have to pull them aside. If it's a open enrollment course, you pull that guy aside or gal aside and just say, listen, like I respect your skill level. I respect what you're bringing to the table. Like obviously you got to validate them, you know, like listen, because because that's the thing a lot of times that comes from a position of fear or insecurity like they want to show everybody else Mm. it's almost like they're paying you to show everybody else what they know and so you have to kind of validate that oh yeah like i'm going to go out to this class and i'm going to show people i'm good show them i'm good i'm going to go and i'm going to get the pin or the medal at the class yeah yeah rather than like say i go to your class and i just do exactly what you tell me to do whether i agree with it or not 
not saying I don't agree with what you, but you get what I'm saying, right? So I'm just going to empty the cup and do exactly what you asked me to do and give it a full run. And I think Andy Stanford was one of the first guys or Paul Gomez was one of the first guys to talk to me about that saying like, when you take a class, because I remember I said to him, I go, Hey, I'm a modified ISO shooter now, but some of the guys I want to train with are kind of old school, modern technique guys. What do I do? He goes, do what they tell you, because there's going to be something in there that you're going to learn. But if you have this obstacle already in place mentally, yeah, you're never going to get it. Yeah. Cause you're too busy with that internal dialogue. So the flip side of that is when I get somebody like that in a class or I see somebody, I'm a, cause I'm an assistant instructor a lot too. I really mm-hmm. enjoy doing that. And, uh, cause I get to see how other people teach and yeah. I get to help too, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so, um, what will happen is, you know, I'll try to address whatever that insecurity is. Like, Hey man, like, obviously you're a good shooter. You're probably ahead of most of the people in this class, Whoa. but uh, yeah, <laughs> but I'm just going to ask you, man, like, Hey, just, just give it a, le- a legit try and then give me feedback when it's over about what you did or did not like. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. for now, man, just give it a try and, and give it like a legit try. Um, and Hey, maybe, also, it'll be an example of these other guys of what can be done with this, whatever. Technique. So you take the approach of let's, uh, I was at a restaurant the other day, Sharon and I, a very nice restaurant that we go to on Valentine's Day. We went the day after, but a uh, couple had like a couple of four-year-old a-hole kids yeah. that were just completely unruly for a nice restaurant. A little maniacs. And I, whatever, awesome. I'm cool, you know, be, wild, but, but, but like, you know, you're trying to have like a nice sit-down dinner and the dad is just whatever I fucking paying $400 for all this food I'm eating and he's going yeah, to town yeah. going and the kids it. all upset. Cause the cheeseburger that they ordered her does not look like the McDonald's that she's oh. used to. And it's this gourmet thing. So she's in tears and mom's like, do you want me to cut it? Do you want mommy to cut it? <laughs> do you want and like, like, so finally I, like, I'm cutting. I'm like, you've asked her a hundred times. Like right. it's not going to change. Like yeah, this yeah. kid's be- response, response to you, keep happening. you know, yeah. the kid's just like, you're feeding her, you know, mommy cares. And the kids yeah. is like, eh, no, I want. Yeah. and now all your food's cold when you should have just grabbed that kid by the face. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you know, you could have said like, yeah. eat it or don't went to, and that's my take. Like I would yeah. ask somebody like, Hey, you came here. Right. Cause you like either paid to have fun or something, but if you're not listening, like, why are you here? Yeah, why are you here? Yeah. yeah right. And that's the doing? thing. So then I try to get to the root of like, like, listen, like we know you're a good shooter. We know you got skills, you know, whatever the case may be. Cause I've had people in um, self-defense seminars do that too. Like Brazilian jiu-jitsu seminars and stuff. And I'm like, Hey man, like I get it. Like you're good. You're accomplished. But some of these other people aren't. Mm-hmm. So if anything, maybe, when you're drilling this or doing this or whatever, you could set an example for them. Yeah. You know, like try that, you know, on that approach. Um, if it's a closed course where it's like, um, it doesn't really happen with military guys, but like a uh, law enforcement class, you know, you'll get a guy who's like a lot of times with those guys, it's their guy. You know what I mean? Like, like they've got a guru. He's their dude. Yeah. Yeah. But he's in this class. And so everything you do, they look at him mm-hmm. or does he, Bob accept this or he has to make Bob's his got comments. A, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Bob's making, got a scowl on rarely, his face. But and rolls sometimes, his eyes yeah, and, you'll get that dude. And uh, sometimes I'll just square him away. Like I'll just take him off to the side and be like, Hey, listen, man, grab him by the face. Yeah. I'll be like, listen, if you're not in this man, then go ahead and have a seat. You know, like I'm, I'm trying to get something done here. We've got a, a lesson plan. We've got objectives we have to reach today and, and you're, you're standing in the way. Yeah, you're getting in the way. And you don't do that in front of everybody. No, 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 right? You praise publicly, correct privately. Mm-hmm. So I'll pull them to the side and be like, hey, dude, look, like I get it. You know, whatever your malfunction is. And pull sometimes, out your butterfly knife as you're talking yeah, to them. exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but I'll just, and, and sometimes they'll deny it, which annoys me even more. Oh, you know, like, no, dude, I'm just having fun. Oh, just be no, like, you know, cool. like, no, bro, like everybody's picking up on it. Yeah. You know, like I can't feel the vibe change when you come around Mm -hmm. so uh and if they don't get it together then there's usually a team leader or a supervisor or something nearby and you don't want to be that snitch type dude where you run to a supervisor but the other side of it is everybody else in that class deserves 100 percent of me yeah in that class and this one dude is not going to take the class down yeah yeah so you got to kill that dynamic right away because because sometimes it's a cultural thing where it's just 
they're you know what i mean they're piss and moan yeah they're that team's culture that group's culture where you just got to get into and bust it up not leaders yeah a not leader that's the leader yeah you get the guy who's like wins break you know that dude you gotta you gotta crush that real quick and that i think is like some of that comes from well i shouldn't say some of it that is uh definitely an experience thing people pay you or you're being paid because it's your job and then you like where's this line where i can not be rude but i don't want to customer it's a customer it's my student or or whatever the dynamic is you know like you own a jujitsu gym there's a fine line between taking care of we just talked about this over coffee last week fine line between being a uh, an instructor, leader, educator, and then customer service. I need you to come back here. I need you to right. keep paying me. I need yeah, you to yeah, right. promote the brand and yeah, all yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and the thing too, is like, it's, it's good for them. You know, that's the other side, like mm-hmm. their behavior that they're exhibiting isn't productive. Mm-hmm. Like that can't possibly be serving them well. Yeah. You know, you came to a class and you're not going to learn a thing. Like, how do you go through life like that? Mm-hmm. You know, how, what other what other aspects of your life absolutely look like garbage because of that attitude? Right. You know, so I, I try to get through to them, you know, because I look at it like, you know, not to sound culty or weird, but I look at it like you're trying to save this person from themselves. From themselves. Yeah, yeah. Like whatever their patterns are that they've just been doing and repeating, you know, uh, they got to stop it. Like it's not helping them. You know, why would you come out to this class to be miserable? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so what else do you go through life being miserable at? Why would you do that? That kind of segues nicely into the difference between a uh, teacher and somebody that's just instructing off of like a a list of material. Now you're actually trying to help the person grow versus, Mm -hmm. you know, we got to get through this. We can't take lunch until we get to, you know, page 13. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I get that side of it too, but. At the same time, you know, and I know you feel the same way. Like we're, we're, we're helping people coach themselves, mm-hmm. helping them train themselves. Like all the information you put on your YouTube and Instagram and everywhere else. Like basically, you had that whole like series, like um, carry gun. That whole series. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what it was called. Must now. have skills. Yeah, you had that whole Let's series do one tonight. Yeah, and it's like essentially somebody if they paid attention. And we're curious enough, had an open mind, had a growth mind uh, mindset enough, they could train themselves Mm -hmm. or at least maintain whatever training or improve whatever training they had received. So that's the thing. Like we're trying to prepare people to keep going. Yeah. Not, you know, I see them a year later and they're the same thing. Yeah. You know, if I come up to, if I see somebody a year later and they do exactly what they were doing a year ago, one of us failed, you know, and it's not always them. Mm. because maybe I didn't give them a map. Maybe I didn't give them a roadmap. Maybe I didn't ignite that fire in them that went home and was like fired up about 80s movie teacher, inner city kids are getting apps. Exactly. You, yeah. I reached them, but no, but the thing is, it's like go home and train, man. Like this is cool stuff. Like yeah, this yeah. is what we get to do, you know, like it's not what we have to do. And that's the other side of it too. If, if, Marco's dealing with somebody who has to be there. Mm. That's a whole other thing, man. Like, and then if, that, a, if that's the case, then you start talking about like, why are you doing this job? Yeah. You, so you have to be here. Don't you want to be good at what? Not like you're kind of bargaining with the person yeah. in a sense. Right. And that's but, the thing. If they're not having those moments or haven't had those moments in their formative years on the job where they were scared to death, and, you know, thought somebody was going to kill them or actually had somebody try to like break their neck or whatever. It's hard to get guys to continue to or get bit by the training bug, mm-hmm. so to speak. You know, mm-hmm. where they're kind of like, "Hey, man, this keeps me alive." Every guy I know that almost died or got shot up or lost a partner, or it's not just somebody on their department, but like themselves or somebody close to those guys are all like the the dude you see like yeah. they get tear it up, up classes and like Tim Grammons. I've seen him at, from Skokie. I've seen him in classes or Jared Reston or <clears throat> excuse me. You had that instance where um, dude had the your own gun in the yeah we it, were fighting over my gun was was that like a life changing definitely uh, that like, was I was brand new mm. I was like literally just on my own out of FTO when that happened 
and um, that fired me up. Like I was training. Tell the before. T- tell the s- short synopsis of the story. You're in a you're in a uh, uh, you're engaging with somebody, and you guys end up in a fist fight. Scuffling. Yeah, I end up scuffling, getting him out of the car. Him getting out of the car, rather scuffling. Um, this is a traffic stop? No, he had run into somebody's house. Ah. He was drunk and drove literally drove into the house okay and um and and, then just really erratic the homeowner came up to me he's like hey man i don't know what's going on with this guy over here but he something's not right you know so i went over there started talking to him ups and downs like just crazy ups and downs and suddenly he goes you want me to get out of the car i was like yeah so you he's know? still sitting in there. You're talking yeah, to yeah. a car crash. But he's the house. screaming. And then one minute he's screaming at me about how oh, he's a cop killer and all oh. this other stuff. And then the next minute he's telling me, you know, I don't know where I'm at. I just need to get home. Mm. I'm like, what in the world's going on with this dude? And then he steps out of the car. And as soon as he steps out of the car, he just throws a big right hand and uh, catches me on the side. Didn't catch me flush. Caught me kind of on the side of the neck. And but he's strong, and he like drove me into the car. Okay, it was like a bear paw, mm-hmm. uh, just you know, smash. <laughs> yeah, and um, and then it was on. I just drove him back, pushed him back up into the door, and scrapped back and forth. Ended up on the ground. You know, we fought over the gun. Mm-hmm. Um, ended up on the ground, uh, under the door, which was weird. So the door is open. Yeah, the door is open. It's like a little Honda, and I'm under the door, and I went to push myself up to get up and I hit the bottom of the door and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get up. Oh no. So that was the, like the mind starts spinning. Cause you're like, why can't I get up? You know, did something happen? Did I get shot? Did I break something? You know, why can't I get up? And this dude's still actively trying to like cave my head in. So ended up being able to get up, get him to the ground, got on top of him, um, got him cuffed up. So, and then that was the end of it. At what point did your muzzle Excuse end up me. under your chin? That was in, that was right in the beginning. Okay. Almost in the beginning. Because as he was coming out of the car, we're slamming around here. And he grabs me around the body. And I feel him going for the He pistol. went to pull your gun. Yeah, I feel him with the pistol dealing with that. Um, and then we were just scrapping over it. And then I felt like, uh, I don't really remember how it ended up here. I remember having it here. And... Um, we were scrapping back and forth and I went to get my pepper spray because, you know, at that point in my career, I was still tool oriented. I was just out of the academy. The answer to everything is a tool. Right, right, right. And um, which is not to disparage, you know, my trainers, they're good dudes, but they just kind of, we see it, right? Every video of cops what, uh, scrapping with somebody, tools come into play mm-hmm. when they shouldn't. And my pepper spray was gone. I don't know where. It fell off. Yeah, somewhere. I don't know when that it popped out. Um, so I couldn't get my pepper spray. So I remember having like this brain freeze of crap, you know, like where's my stuff, you know, and now we're doing this and then boom, that. So my hands there, his hands there, and I can feel him like pressing, but I think, well, I I know it was out of battery from getting pushed underneath of me. So he couldn't do anything with it. So, and then I couldn't do anything with it to do the same back to him. So we ended up scrapping all over it. I hit him a couple of times with it. I'm pretty sure. Just. Yeah, just clubbing uh, him. No real, yeah, no real technique or anything. So after this, you get him cuffed up and you go on that. I went on a training, insanity training binge. Yeah. Yeah. I just trained like a maniac. Um, I don't want to be caught under a Honda door. Yeah, I never want to be in that position again. And I and and bear in mind, like I'd already fought, I already boxed, I'd already kickboxed, I'd already competed in grappling. Um Jiu-jitsu. I've been training jiu-jitsu since 93, 94. What year was that? 98, 99. So you had three, four, five, six years of jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I had had a long time of training, but in my mind, I had always compartmentalized the things as two different things. Mm. You know, like, this is what I have to do for police work. This is what I have to do if I'm out and about. Yeah, yeah. I get into a scuffle. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was weird, right? That disconnect. So making that making that change. But once that happened, that was it. Like it was on. Like my brain clicked. Like it's all just a fight. It doesn't matter what it is. doesn't matter what's in my hand or not in my hand. 
it's just a means to an end. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. just a fight. And then that's when I really, truly started blending everything together. Like I've been blending stuff before that, but blending the professional with the personal had not happened. I see. Because of maybe fear too, because you're always, it's beat into your head that if you do something outside of SOP, you'll be sued, you'll be fired, you'll go to prison, you know, all this other crazy Mm -hmm. stuff, which Mm -hmm. is not necessarily true. Yeah. You know, but at that time, being a new guy, still on probation, all that good stuff, you know, I just brain froze. Did did what did what you had trained yourself to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then what was funny was what saved me was going back to jujitsu and that stuff. Because once I got him on the ground, I just knee rode him and humored his arms behind him and handcuffed him. So, but that sparked a fire. And I think Claude Runner has talked about that before, mm-hmm. where you know he has a theory about the first two years on the in any armed profession if you don't have something like that happen to you you probably will never get bit with the training bug like mm-hmm. you'll never get that urgency or you'll never have that feeling of i gotta be ready all the time mm-hmm. you know like i can't get ready i gotta stay ready and um i think then so that's what happened to me man so i I, I adopted this mindset of six by six, which was um, six hours a day, six days a week of training. And I just, every day, I would take Sundays off at that time, uh, went to church and stuff. How many years did you, uh, did you do the six by six? 20. 20? Mm-hmm. With the exception of um, being in the hospital for pancreatitis and um, my knee surgery coming out of that. Um, cause there's a couple weeks where I couldn't walk. They yeah. had to put my knee cap back together. And in my aneurysm, I had, um, I was still training, but I couldn't touch a gun during the couple months where things weren't yeah, yeah. working properly. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. safe. You yeah. Know? I didn't yeah. trust myself. My brain could just shut down. Yeah. I didn't trust myself to, I guess I could have used a cert pistol, but I didn't trust myself to have an empty pistol, empty weapon. So, but yeah, I maintained that up until recently. So I think, you know, what we're, point we were driving at is that s- some people don't have that crazy desire. They're forced to do it for their job. And it's mm-hmm. so part of being a good instructor is helping elicit that desire in people. Get that and, guy to turn it on. Yeah. A lot of times the way to get to them is their family. You know, I, I, I do that with people all the time. I've got some like a couple women. Uh, you'll, you'll meet some at the next S12, one of them she um she'll say i can't i can't i go all right i'm now i'm the guy that's smashing your kid's face in and you're watching i got you tied to a chair you know like how do you feel about that fuck you like don't make that it's not a joke no it's not a joke it's not not, 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 i'm not joking yeah yeah and that's the thing it's it's you know it's that combination of fear and love yeah you know so what's your greatest fear regarding the thing you love the most yeah, something you know, bad happening. Fires them up, you know. And how dare you? And the thing is, too, when you talk to people about that stuff, you try to try to relate to them that not all this training that we do is going to be dealing with somebody who has malevolent intent. We might be dealing with a car crash. Might be dealing with you know your kid fell down the steps, uh, something fell on you or on your child. You got to be. You have the ability to. Can you figure it out? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Does Paul have military experience? No, no, no military experience. Who did, who did you guys train under? This is Mike Paz. So I don't want to make this a discussion like that. We can talk about that stuff, but if you Google Paul's name, you can read so much stuff about him. Paul's trained under dozens of guys. So Paul owns an SBG gym. So yeah, street place gym. Yeah, in Bartlett, Bartlett, Illinois. Mm-hmm. Some Matt Thornton, right? Mm-hmm. Matt Thornton. Uh, when do you teach a child gun safety? As soon as possible. Yeah. I mean, as soon as they, as soon as they can comprehend yeah. what it's about. To me, I do that. Like we did that with my little brothers, my kids, uh, my nephews that I taught, like just like a hot stove or anything else, yeah. not fear, but this is what yeah. this is. And yeah, we, I did a familiarity type thing. Like this is what it is. It's, uh, try to eliminate that curiosity. Of wanting to mess around with it when you're not around. Yeah, yeah. You know, and keeping it locked up. Everybody says keep it locked up, but we all know. Hey, Les. Reality is kids will figure out how to open anything. 
Yeah, they will. So yeah. how do I eliminate the curiosity, help them understand this is a, a very serious thing to play around with and that the consequences are great. That's a tough, that's a tough one. You should write a book on that. Teaching kids? Yeah. Do a series on it or something. That would I know be you've had topic. kids in your, I know you've had kids in your classes. That, I, I think, I think we, I think we, as adults in general, my mom was really good about, um, I guess somebody, a psychologist would probably call it some kind of immersion, but here's a knife, chop that. Yeah. And nobody ever really cut themselves. I mean, you know, you, every, everybody that works in a kitchen long enough uh, is going to slice their fingertip or something. Sure. But we'd be peeling potatoes and yeah. working over the hot stove as little kids, not, you know, three, but right. six years old, standing on a chair, whacking carrots, not like a super sharp yeah, knife, yeah. but sharp enough, it would do it. Yeah. And you, so many parents are like a, a, I had some nephews here. I don't want to say which ones, but they're teenagers. <laughs> awesome boys. Yeah. You're at my house. You're sleeping in my bed. You're washing your ball sack in my shower and right, eating right. food. <laughs> exactly. you know, they get up from the table and they're teenagers. I said, Hey, motherfucker, get back here. Wash these yeah, dishes yeah. up. Take the so, dishes they're, up. so they're washing the dishes and washing the pots and pans. I cooked and my, uh, their mother sure. uh, is like, are they washing the dishes? And I'm like, yeah, they're washing the dishes. He's like, oh, that's not a good idea. I'm like, why not? Well, they're probably not going to be clean. Well, like, we'll look. And if they're not, I'll make them do it yeah, again. Yeah, you got to do it like, again. It's not yeah, that exactly. hard. It's not a hard thing. But it seems like too many people, like, it's it's so scary. Guns, knives. Like, I helped some of my nephews drive because their parents didn't. Like, I just I can't, can't, handle, can't handle it. You know, heavy. Yeah, yeah. What do you, just, it, it's it, scary. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's scary, man. It, it can be. <laughs> It can be, but we, I think we don't give people enough credit. What's the youngest age you have in your class? Oh, I mean, we've done like, uh, didn't I see a, you had a video or something where it was like a 14 year old. Yeah, I did. I did one with a teenager that age. I've had like a 10 year old, but that was more of like a fundamental. I used to do the hunter safety program here for the department of natural resources. And that was, you know, it's not really a shooting course. Yeah. It's not like a shooting class. You shoot like some 12 gauge, uh, kid size shotguns a 20 gauge kid size shotguns to like help the kid you know get yeah. get conditioned to some recoil but it's more like this can kill you right it kills animals that's yeah. what we're doing with it don't fuck around with yeah. it we had those uh in our school that's how long ago that was when i was a kid we had yeah. those as part of 4-h and in uh maryland, maryland? Yeah. yeah in maryland we had a hunter safety and it was not unusual for the first day of hunting season for all the to be gone. Yeah. You know, out hunting. Um, but we would, yeah, we had like little 22s mm-hmm. and four tens and bow and arrows. So we had a little safety on all those things. It's a very, uh, I know, you know what I remember? This is funny. Here's what I remember in, in the class, from the though. class, from the class. Here's what I remember. When you come to a fence in a field, ah, unload, unload, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Set it down on the other mm-hmm. side or mm-hmm. don't lean it, set it down on the other side and then climb over and then pick it up. And then get set up. I remember that. It's funny, right? That stuck in my head. And even as an adult now, like Aaron and I were out bird hunting and I don't even, I don't need to do it, but it's like in my brain, like I'm going to clear this fucker out. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't need to, not like I'm special, but like I can maybe step over the fence without even. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But we still do it. It's like in your brain. I have a, uh, I guess he'd be like a second cousin. I don't, nobody knows exactly what happened, but he's a woodsman up in Northern Wisconsin. They found him dead. Yeah. Something he gun was somewhere. It shouldn't have been while moving over an obstacle yeah. and he blew his guts out and blood. Yeah. yeah. It's no, yeah. it's not I, a joke, man. And he That's was, a, and they, they were no, from uh, superior Wisconsin, you know, yeah. bloggers, Northern yeah, people so grew up and just that stuff and... split, split second. That's the, I think that's the thing is that uh, there's no, there's no do over, you yeah, know, with yeah. guns and sure. we know that, but I think that's the part I get, you've heard me. I pop off at people, motherfucker. That thing yeah, yeah. is not a, yeah, right. that's not a toy. Like you can't, if I'm no there, other... I go behind you. I give them the hug. Yeah. The back room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I think it's, that would be interesting, man. You should do a series on teaching kids. Well, I, let's I, do I, it. I have not taught. I think I've had one kid in a in a handgun class. Yeah, yeah. I don't like kids, man. I don't want them around me. So 
He's got a whole group. He's got groups of kids that he does I love with his kids. Yeah. kids are awesome. Me man. too. And they're like they're the best. Yeah. They they don't know can't. They yeah. don't know impossible. Mm-hmm. They just know what they just saw you do. So if you could do it, why can't they? It was at jujitsu in town here this morning, and one of the guys wife was sick so he had twins a boy and a girl four years old yeah. and it was same thing uh come on guys stop come on guys stop they're running in circles yeah, around, yeah. <laughs> around around the four of us that are training yeah, right and i was like you know i was ready to clothesline the kid <laughs> once they're cute kids yeah, but, right. but then when they were done when we were done the four-year-old everett was his name he came out to wrestle with nice his standard pound dad yeah, like yeah. It. he was ready like to go nice. he's, you know, he's that big and yeah yeah let's do this oh that's awesome yeah you're right though yeah, they, yeah. And it's they don't know it's it's the thing it's just you know like the saying goes you know it never occurs to a child that they're not going to learn how to walk hmm. right like they fall down they get up they fall mm-hmm, down they get mm-hmm. up it never occurs to them that oh man i tried it three or four times fuck it can't do it you they know, just keep pushing. Yeah, just keep going until they get it, you know, and it's the same in jujitsu and all that. And it's it's interesting. I think it's not until later that you have enough layers put on you uh, from life or whatever that enough enough of the you can't do that layers, you know, that's not for you layer. Mm-hmm. You know, you get enough of those on you and that kid's buried under there, you know, that like a hard candy shell. Yeah, failure. pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> Of just everybody else's failures that they impose on you because yeah. they're like, hey, look, I sucked at life. You're going to suck uh-huh. at life. Mm-hmm. So don't even try. Yeah, it's good. You yeah. know, that's going to be hard. So you might as well just not try anymore. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, man, don't do that to that kid. That whole kids thing brings up like a whole political uh, community topic, like folks talking about like uh, and that. Like, I always think, well, who raised them? Who, who, who fought the Great War on Terror? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's, that's a completely different argument. But yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah, that's just a ridiculous. I worked with millennials. You know, I worked with you know the, and and that's always the older generation always looks at the newer. I remember the first time I sat in roll call and there was a guy in roll call that was the same age as my oldest, hmm. and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> I quit. That's it. I just grew old overnight. Yeah. You know? But um, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're different, but they, whose fault is that? Like you said, who raised, who raised kids to think that showing up is good enough for a trophy? Yeah, participation medals and participation trophies and all that. And the interesting thing, though, is the kids that are serving, the kids that are in the police forces and in the fire departments and in the military and all those guys, like they're different. They're they're wired different, mm-hmm. you know. Like they're not. Yeah, there is some of that to some degree, you know, the participation medal stuff. But at the same time, there's also the they want to get after it. Mm. Like they want to do a good job. Yeah, they yeah. want to they want to serve. They want to so I hear people talk about like 20 somethings and 30 somethings or whatever the age, I don't even know what millennial age is. But uh I always look think about like well, every millennial I'm on the range with or on the mat with or whatever mm they're in some way is so have served in the military or the police or fire department they're serving their community in mm-hmm. some way mm-hmm. right like i'm pretty sure there was like some world war ii vets or world war ii age guys that when the vietnam era guys came back and started taking those jobs and fire and police and whatever there's probably some korean and world war ii vets are like look at these pussies mm-hmm. you know <laughs> right, right, right. Right, you know, right. I mean, and then those Vietnam era guys were looking at me when I came on the job. Right, right, like, right. So with this guy, yeah, you know, and the, uh, the, the cycle of of decay, really. Yeah, like you it's get to the point is. where you can't accept it anymore. Yeah, but I, I don't really see. I don't know, man. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't know. Have you seen an issue with it? Well, I guess where I was going with that when it popped in my head was that we, you know, just talking about training younger people, not just in combatives or firearms, but we start talking about like societal problems. That's a nice way to fix it. I, I, the guy that was my hunter safety instructor, his name was Laverne Young. He passed away. That's an awesome name. Yeah, he was a man. Yeah, you got to know a lot of guys with awesome names. Laverne Young. Everett. And yeah. Laverne. I'm he, uh, he was. Uh, 
he was my hunter safety instructor when I was 10 years old. And then I took my son and my nephew and like, he yeah. was still there. Oh, that's cool. and that's actually when I went back, that's an awesome. Legacy. I was like, man, you're still here. Like, yeah, yeah, like that's, that's very cool. Yeah. And he like yeah. ran the whole thing for this region. He passed five, six, seven years ago, maybe. But I was like, Hey, you know, get me, get me into this, man. I want to yeah. do this. So he, you know, got me hooked up with the state to do it, but it's all volunteer. But my point was like that guy, that little thing when I was 10 years old had an impact. I mean, it didn't yeah. make me a great person or anything. I turned out to be a shithead in, in a lot of ways, but <laughs> my, well, my point was it, Temporarily. it, it was, it, 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 it instilled something into me yeah. and he had the opportunity to do that. He could have just sat and read off the freaking yeah. boards, but right. he cared and communicated. And, uh, and I think about how many thousands of kids he had the opportunity and dads, because the dads yeah. would be there too, or yeah. moms, but mostly dads, because uh, the moms were probably home doing the laundry and making sandwiches. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's cool. I, you know, <laughs> I was thinking about, you know, that's, I wish I could remember the guy that taught my class, because I remember part of the 4 H thing. Um, we went out and did like perk tests. Oh, yeah. Stuff like that. Looking for where to put your well in. Yeah, and, and things mm -hmm. like that. And I just remember, the guy who taught that class was just so just excited about nature, Being about like finding cool things. And I remember him stressing to us that, you know, you're walking on ground that for thousands of years, people have been walking across this ground. Yeah. Yeah. Natives. Yeah. Like there's so many people have walked before you on this ground, like treat it with respect. Mm -hmm. They left it for you. Leave it for the next, you I know, it was that. his whole thing. And it was really cool. I wish I could remember that guy's name. He probably hated me. I was a hyperactive kid. Your story right there kind of ties into what Alan Selker's saying. What's the best way to approach deep subject matter with a new audience? And how do you build rapport quickly? I just, I read that a minute ago and it made me, when he just said, oh, yeah. your teacher said that, be authentic. Like he literally authentically cared. It wasn't, I'm here to teach these kids to get a paycheck. He clearly cared about yeah. the subject matter. Yeah. And that's like a hard thing. People like shooting guns. And so they think, or whatever the, the subject is, they like the thing as a hobby. Mm -hmm. And then they think if I can teach this, then I can be around my hobby. Yeah. And that's cool to do that right. rather than like that guy probably had a library of stuff on oh, yeah. flora and fauna and yeah, yeah, probably made his own cool kombucha stuff. before it was cool. Probably, <laughs> probably grew weed. Uh-huh. Probably, probably grew hippie, weed. Hippie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> had a root cellar. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's yeah, I I Actually, think... his teacher was Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. Uh, Mr. Sanders. Uh... Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> um, I think, you know, like the rapport thing, like you said, it, called, it comes from that authenticity. Yeah. Being genuine about and just really loving what you're doing. And if they. It's kind of like being at Starbucks and talking mm, to somebody about the coffee. You know, like if you're in a line at a coffee shop or whatever, and you look over at the guy next to you and you're like, hey, I can't really, I don't really know what I want to get. What do you usually get? You know, like it's easy to have that conversation because you're both, you have a shared interest. You're both there to get coffee. If you were like, hey. Yeah. Uh, I was at the laundromat. And I was like, right. "Hey, what kind of coffee you like?" He'd be like, "Yeah, Psh. yeah. <laughs> right, right, right." Or ask the guy at the 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 coffee shop about a stock investment or something. Yeah. Like, what the hell are you talking? Yeah, like, about? come on, bro. Yeah. You know. So that's the thing. So having the class there, you have a shared interest, whatever it might be, and just be authentic about everything that you're doing and genuine about everything you're doing. And then also, you know, kind of back to that problem student question. Um, Stephen Covey wrote that really cool book, you know, the seven habits. Mm. And, um, one of the, one of the habits, maybe it's like the fifth one or something. You gotta, you gotta seek to be understood or seek to understand. I'm sorry, before being understood, seek to understand before. Yes. Know yeah. what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so, well, not only that, but I want to understand what they're trying to say to me. Mm -hmm, what are mm -hmm, they trying to get mm -hmm. from this class? You know, like, what do you, what are your expectations? Like, what do you really think is going to come from this, you know, and then, and then try to, you know, start to broach the subject or start to instruct or coach or whatever it might be. But 
I really like to kind of figure out why they're here and what they hope to get from this. Mm -hmm. And I, I ask people that a lot. Yeah, me you know, too. I'll say like, hey, what do you, why are you here? And, you know, what What do you want to get from this? Like, what I do you want to- hoping to take this relationship to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only way I could be in the same room as you. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why that door automatically locked. I'm like, how do I get out of here? Get that Matt Lauer door, click. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I think that's a big part of it. That's how we start all of our classes. Why are you here? Yeah. Why'd you come here? Yeah, why are you, why are you here? You know what, what? What do you what do you want to walk away from this with? Yeah. Like, what do you want? What do you want to take from this class? And then I think that helps you kind of build that rapport because now you're, rather than being instructor student, it's team working together. Like, yeah, you came to me. I've got the knowledge. I'm going to do my best to impart that knowledge to you. But we're working together to reach that objective. I'm listening to you. That makes sense. We're talking to them too. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I'm talking to them. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Some of your windows you have open there in your browser are kind of disturbing. Oh, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, rapport is huge, man. How do you present your basic safety and basic fundamentals verbal PowerPoint printouts? <laughs> as soon as I heard PowerPoint, stop <laughs> trolling me, dude. Yeah. yeah, what are you mad at us? Yeah, PowerPoints. I mean, I definitely have a printout, but I don't do PowerPoints. Um, the problem with depending on PowerPoints is depending on PowerPoints. So, what happens when you hand people the printout from the PowerPoint? They just start looking at that, yeah, or they just start looking at the screen and they tune you out. Can we get to shooting? Can we get to wrestling? Can we yes. get to, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they just want to get to the next thing. And then the other thing, too, is sometimes when you teach on more austere environments, they don't have all that stuff. You know, you're, you're lucky if you have a porta potty out there. So they might not have a place where I could set up a PowerPoint and do all that kind of stuff. So I just got used to just kind of having it all in my head. Which might not be the best place for it. No, to be. I think I mean that's well. That comes down to like uh, depends too what you're doing. Like if you were teaching like a long range rifle class, like. Uh, Calgary, oh, Calgary, yeah. and you need to know all of these crazy mathematics. I mean, he probably knows it all. He does, yeah. but but a lot it's of that crazy. stuff, like you might, you don't need the you. It, it, what you need is there. Yeah, yeah everything's already. You're not teaching here. like constitutional law where you've got to oh, memorize. Oh, yeah, no, that would be a totally different thing. Yeah, for what I do, I don't do. I didn't, and not knocking on guys that do that because I know guys that do. Uh, really good PowerPoint presentations. Tiffany Johnson. She actually teaches a class on that Does she? at the Range Master Conference. She has some phenomenal stuff, but she's also a professor, you know, a law professor and a, an attorney. And she's done presentations with, you know, the UN and everybody else. So she's next level, man. I'm not even trying to pretend to be there. Yeah. I'm lucky if I got three by five cards or a napkin for the restaurant. You know? I think you'd do better than that. I do better than that. I do. I, Cause I take it serious, man. I'm, I try to make sure that people leave feeling like they got more than what they paid for. Otherwise, it's, why would they be out there? Paul Burson has a good question. How do you show good followership when attending other classes, when other students look to you because you also instruct? I don't. I had a guy call me today. He's coming to the next S12. Mm -hmm. I got an email from him. And if he's listening, I'm not, don't, I didn't take it wrong, but I think it's a good discussion point sent me an email said hey i'm an instructor i'm coming i want to come to the s12 class but before i come i um you looking at grounds in there no i'm oh. stirring it up that eighth oh. teaspoon of sugar didn't... he put a lot of sugar in there Keeps me he, sweet. Said, he said he um, said i don't want to show up and have any issues and i'm like this isn't an email i'm like uh okay Cool. Like, I don't want you to, that's exactly what yeah. I said. I'm like, I don't either. That oh, sounds man. around the same yeah. thing. Yeah, try not to have any issues. Well, he, so he responds and he's like, uh, uh, I did another class. And when the guy found out I was an instructor, he thought I was there just to like sc scab his stuff. And I go, well, you know, I said, you shouldn't even need to tell me that. Just show up and train. Yeah. So then we end up talking. He's like, I want to let you know I'm not going to be there to like take center stage. And I'm like, not a problem. You know, we won't let you. You know, like, like, yeah. but he had all of these fears and I, he goes, sure. he goes like, uh, I basically said to him, I go, you didn't need to have any of this discussion. You just didn't need to do any of the things that you're telling me that you're concerned about, right. like to show up. And like you said, a minute ago, just show up and train, yeah, show up and train, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think uh, good followership. So that's that is a good question. I think you lead by example. Uh, so what I try to do is everything I'm asked to do. Mm -hmm. You know, if the instructor says, "Hey, don't touch your guns," I keep my hands off. You know, if the instructor says, "You know, hey, you know, can you guys get some paper up here? Let's get targets put up." Don't I want to be the first one to be yeah. putting targets up. If the instructor's like, "Hey, we have to police the brass before we leave for the night," everybody hates that. Like I hate, and I've been spoiled because I've been teaching on ranges for so long, where I don't have to do that. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I take I go take classes and they're like, "Hey, we got to clean up." So be the first guy. Yeah. To yeah. Be grab, cleaning a, up. grab a bucket. Yeah. Be the to first town. dude. Show lead by example what it means to be a good student. You know, like I try to think about what would I want in my class. Mm -hmm. Who, what kind of that's exactly person, what I was gonna say. Yeah, that's, what kind yeah. of person would I want to be on the line in my class? Highly then, attractive, tight jeans, <laughs> flexible. Flexing. <laughs> yeah, flexing and flexible. Yeah, both. Nutella banana <laughs> yeah. sandwiches in the lunch right, pail. With honey. With honey in a frying pan. Yes. And uh yeah, and just and just be that mm -hmm. the whole time. Mm -hmm. Just keep it keep it on yeah. the whole time and stay on point. And I think um two things come of that maybe three but one thing is the instructor appreciates it because it's always you don't want to be that guy you know, there's and there's always that concern of mm -hmm. who's going to be that guy mm -hmm. you know unfortunately i haven't had that guy in a long time i definitely class. stepped on my dick before not <clears throat> um trying to like one up or upstage the person that's running the course but um you know, wisecracking and shit. And then people want to like, oh, what's he going to say next? So I don't know. What am I? You know, yeah, and then yeah. all of a sudden it becomes, you've been with me. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah. all right, I better fucking sit my lip here, you know? <laughs> so like, it, there is a fine line too between having a good time. Yeah. And, yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's like you have some fun and it goes too far. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then you're on fire, mm -hmm. streaking. Mm -hmm. um, but, and then, and then the second thing is it's, it's, it sets an example for everybody else mm -hmm. of what a good student should be. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, Hey, you know, this guy teaches all over the country in the world or whatever it might be. And here he is the universe. Right. And here he is in class, head down, getting after cleaning it. up brass, yeah, doing whatever, yeah, is yeah, yeah. whatever it takes, whatever he's asked to do, he's mm -hmm. doing it. You mm -hmm. know, like, Oh, okay. That's a note. Take mm -hmm. a note, you know? Um, and, and I think too, you know, like on a, a third, kind of point on that is from a business point of view it puts you in a better light with other students mm -hmm. so if they were to let, think like hey i want to train with this guy they see oh he's not a douche mm -hmm. you know like he's a genuine dude who really wants to learn who i've been in classes before where i i've been with like other people like maybe me and you were in we're in less's class or somebody's and none of this is true but i've been in that scenario where one of the dudes is like, ah, man, fucking less, you know, God, the guy's, yeah. you know, he's, that was mostly me. Yeah. But you, yeah. you know, people yeah. do that. And then like, yeah. and then just the exact opposite of what you're saying. Now these people are like, oh man, Paul's like motherfucking the yeah, instructor. Yeah. It's and, never a good look. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, never yeah, a good you're look, a, man. you're a punk. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It is never a good look. And I've been around instructors that have done that. And it's always left a bad taste in my mouth where mm -hmm. I was kind of like, wow, like, that's not cool. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. none of the instructors I look up to do that. So why are you doing that in front of the class yeah. of all places? You yeah, know? I think it's pretty simple. Show up, have your gear, like all your mags topped off. Yeah, ready be, to go. Yeah, be the dude that's there to train yeah. and be helpful, but keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, I think it goes a long way too to building those relationships too. I've and, had uh, people ask me like, hey, what do you think? And I'll just say like, yeah, yeah. I got, you know, talk to you at lunch or talk, not even, I don't even want to talk to you period here about certain things because yeah. it'll, because that just would irritate the shit out of me if it was my gig. Yeah. Everything that he told you earlier, I've got a completely different stance on, it's you know, just undoing. Well, but yeah. even if it's, and even if it's not like anything that's like a, um, that's chances are I wouldn't be somewhere if I had some hugely dis, yeah. dis uh, you know, think, different viewpoints, but yeah, I think too, with that, what I like to tell people, and this is an honest answer, you know, is, um, give me a couple of days. Cause I want to try it for a couple of days. Like, I don't know. I remember when I first learned, so Benny Cooley was the first guy to teach that arm way out mm. turned kind of the old trap shooter 
in position with the long gun? That's not what your other friend from the East Coast says. He says he was the guy. Really? Mm -hmm. That's what he told me. Maybe. Yeah, Benny. So Benny Cool was the first guy that I saw doing that. And um, so it was just phenomenal, you know, and, and um, kind of a game changer for me because, um, yeah, I, w I went from like this real tight, like, mm -hmm. you know, MP5, HK elbows in, yeah. yeah, rolling it like you're trying to wring out a towel to more of like a what I was doing with the pistol already from DR, you know. So it all kind of blended together. And, um, you know, I've had, I, but there was, I've gone to other classes since that time where the instructors are like, well, why would you have, you know, your body all contorted, you know, gravity works, gravity pulls down, you want to pull down to team the recoil on the rifle and all this other stuff or the shotgun or whatever it is. And um, I've had people say like, you know, get back to the hotel or whatever after the class, like, what'd you think? You know, and the genuine answer, the only authentic answer that you, I can give is, I don't know yet. Right. I need to go back home. Sure dry fire it for a couple of days, go live for a couple of days. Right now we're just doing like this immersion, Yeah, you know, like eight hours or six hours or whatever, just, you know, a new thing trying to unplug, you know, years of doing it another way to learn this other way. And then, um, yeah. So I think the only answer I could ever give anybody, if they were to say that to me would be, give me a couple of days, mm -hmm. you know, and then after a couple of days, I'll give you, an answer on the technique, like what I think of the technique, but I'm never going to discuss the instructor. Like I'm never going to yeah. talk about the other so, guy. So my takeaway from that question, and we both agree is, uh, and you could easily, I don't, I can't reach down there, is have a list of what is a good in student, what do they look like? You know, starts out with on time, you know, pay, yeah. paid, pay, that's the, that's the most annoying. Yeah. 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 Like I got a on time mags ready to go. Yeah. Everything yeah. ready to go. Yeah. Your gears like, good. 15 You're, minutes. Oh, I brought my M and P, but I got a Glock. Who's got a, yeah, you know, yeah. got a Glock holster. Who's got a, you know, yeah. have all your gear ready. Yeah, to have go. everything ready, man. Yeah. I don't care if you've only got one gun and you've only got four mags or whatever. That's cool. Be but a, keep be a them, good example. Keep a pocket full of ammo and keep topping those bad boys off. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. never be the guy that people have to wait on. Yeah. You know, never That's be that annoying. dude. Yeah. And I don't want to be that guy. I don't you know? either. I don't either. So, yeah. Time, time. There's only so much time. Yeah. And then, and you know, what's cool, man, is I've actually got work from that. Actually, I'm sure. I've actually got gigs from that. Yeah. Yeah. Where, yeah. That guy like was the, cool. Yeah. The, like the instructors asked me to come out and help him teach or, or, or he's even referred me to other things where like, Hey man, I can't make this gig, but can you do it? You know, would you mind, you know, helping me teach this class or something like that? So you just never know what doors are going to open for you if you're just a cool person. Less, unless I'm just looking at his name. He came down to the class we just did in Florida. And, you know, a lot of the guys, I had to tell them who he was. Um, not that I had to, but, you know, I'm like, hey, this is my friend Les. This is oh, yeah, I brag here. about Les all the time. Yeah, but like, you know, they're like, oh, shit. I'd be cool if I proxy. Yeah, yeah but then like, like there he is. He's helping. Awesome? You know, he, yes. he spent his time there. He he shot and showed off some of his skills, but then he also you know, was on the line helping people. And yeah. he didn't once, didn't once to my face say anything bad. Right. How do you work? Oh, how about a plug for Paul's website? Yeah, well, how about it? Yeah, it's uh, sbgbartlett.com, S-B-G-B-A-R-T-L-E-T-T.com. Thank you, you. You can also Thanks. just Google Paul Sharp, like like the butterfly knife, and uh, you'll see and it. Shuriken. On, on uh, Instagram, Same. you're uh, Paul underscore Sharp underscore SBG. SBG yeah. And then on uh, uh, Facebook. It's Paul Sharp. Paul Sharp. And then SBG Illinois also. SBG so Illinois. Yeah. But be careful with the Paul Sharp because there's like a hundred of us out there. Is it? Are you? Well, not me. There's like, I'm I'm a member of the Paul Sharp group on Facebook. So everybody named Paul Sharp. Oh. Not everybody, but oh, there's okay. probably like 2,000 people in there. People from all over the world named Paul Sharp. And we have a group and we talk about how awesome it is to have our name. It's a good name. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. It was my grandfather's name and then my dad's. So when I was a kid, I didn't dig that because, you know, it's not cool to be named after somebody else. 
I agree with David. If you go to a class, don't tell them you're an instructor. Never. Um, I mean, Never. that's definitely douchey. One time you and I were with Les at a, a Super Dave class. And Dave's like, you know, tell me your background, blah, blah, blah. And Les goes, my name's Les Kizmartoni. Um, they call me Les Pepperoni. This is what he sounds like in my head. <laughs> it's like I shoot a little bit. I'm just a student, you know, yeah. like, and he's like, what's your skill set? That's or what's your skill level? Yeah. And and some guys are like, well, I'm a fucking 10 and a half, you know, on a scale of one to three. Yeah. And Les is like, I'm a beginner. I'm a, I'm a new, I'm not, he, and he wasn't being a smart ass. It wasn't like, you know, who I'm going to show these guys. It was, he, he phrased it in a way that says like, I am a pupil here to learn no more, no yeah. less. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah, was cool. Never tell them, never tell them you're an instructor. How do you handle the know-it-all types? Well, Paul has the, the gauntlet. He puts his gloves on. And, no. I'm like, listen, dude. Bring meet, those. Meet me over here by the burn barrel. Alan Selkler's bringing his tightest hipster jeans to Dude's Weekend. Like Do it. it. I like it. Do it. Besides safety reasons, would you ever leave a class you attended? Uh, I actually have. Other than safety Other reasons? Other than safety reasons. Diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good reason. That would be rough. Some ranges where they're like, yeah. That Paul guy is shitting everywhere. Yeah, the porty potty's like uh, <laughs> two miles that way. Um, Man, let's see. I've been uncomfortable in classes. Like from safety? Not from safety, just from personality clashes that were happening between yeah. the instructor and students and you know yeah. that kind of weirdness happening yeah, with yeah. like you know female students where you're kind of like oh bro what are you doing you know like i've been in some classes like that too where you're like uh i will if that happens like and i've traveled i traveled all the way to the dakotas for one and there was some weirdness like that and I, i'm like well i'm here i'm not leaving yeah. But like, what can I focus on to get some value? Yeah, yeah. And I just kind of like went into that little headspace. Some, like, yeah. Sometimes you learn what not to do. Yeah. You know, or how how would I better handle this yeah. type thing? You know, you play it back in your head later that night at the yeah. hotel or whatever. Um. Yeah, I only left one. I've left two classes for safety. Safety though. Safety reasons. Both That's were law. Heavy. Both were law enforcement. I I, ha I wasn't at this class, but a. a very fairly famous um, instructor did a course and the guy that hosted it didn't go back the next day. He said it was just so unorganized and like, wow. And, yeah, that would, and I had that attended that class a couple years beforehand hmm. and um, didn't have the same experience, but I talked to a bunch of people. They're like, it was just so unorganized and such yeah. a waste of time. And this guy's like, I'd rather be with my family than come waste another day yeah. out on the range. Yeah. yeah. One was a um, guy had, they were doing this and, had everybody, you know, belly to back in a, in a, and so when you went to do your reload, your elbow went in front of the guy's muzzle behind you. And when I said something to the instructor privately, I said, Hey man, you know, like guys are getting really dangerously close to shooting each other in the elbow. Yeah. That's part of it. Shooting your, I'll go, what, which part? <laughs> right. you know? And he said, uh, this is a dangerous business. And I thought, man i don't know about all that so i'm gonna see you later so i end up leaving but from what i was told later um the uh state police range that those guys taught on they were not allowed to come back and teach again because the state police range is all on camera even back then it's all on, it was like uh, right after 9 11 so 2001 uh state police range was all under cctv at that time and uh because it's outdoor range so people sneak on it or whatever and uh, they had reviewed the video, and the range master was like, "We're done. That's it. You're not coming back." So, and then I'm another class was, that is later. Yeah, <laughs> and then another uh, another class was um, 1911 centric. It was a good class. It was actually pretty good. Uh, but the second day, guys were racing to come out of the holster, trying to do this thing where you hit a uh, popper at a certain distance twice. Or as many times as possible before it goes while down. it's falling, okay. <clears throat> and one guy kept cheating the safety in the holster and ended up coming out and putting so around next to his he'd leg. holster and he'd shut it off, he'd take yeah. the safety to off as he was yeah, holstering, yeah. yeah. And um, he put around into the ground next to his foot, which and, it was and his somebody own foot. else's, yeah. though, yeah, yeah. And then there was a splash because we were on a gravel range, so the splash up got to the guy next to him and 
throw some words back and forth. Yeah, what and, the? and the instructor that was running it thought it was funny. Like, yeah, you know, like basically like, yeah, guys are going to game it. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Guys are going to game it. But the difference between the safety coming off here, like we've talked before, that's finger the trigger here, finger the trigger here. <laughs> that's like, horrible. You're not gaining that much time. Mm -hmm. You're not scale, shaving that much time off. And the pepper popper uh, not falling down and you shooting yourself is. Yeah. Like there's just nothing to be gained from this. So that was the second one where I was, I bailed. Second, third day I bailed. What the hell? Uh, diarrhea in a gunfight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That would be bad. Do you ever get tired of teaching the same thing over and over? No. No? No. Never. Fundamentals, man. How can you ever not? I don't know if I've ever presented the, the same material in the same way. Not like it's any different, but you constantly, like, you know, you come You're up with like, new little... It. Yeah, yeah, new little, and that's the that's the part I enjoy. Like, damn it, why did I never yeah, yeah. think of that analogy? Yeah, you keep refining it, right? Yeah. yeah, you keep finding better ways to present it. I have a, a folder on my phone after each class, like at, like at break time and stuff. I'll just, I have like maybe two notes, like describe this this way in the future. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this made sense, saw this, and that made sense. Like and it, it, linking thoughts together, yeah. and then it, you know, kind of keeps yeah. growing the... right more spices in the recipe yeah i mean i don't think you can ever get tired of presenting good material that's diving because every time i present it i'm diving deeper myself diving deeper yeah so every time i i present anything i'm i'm going further into it myself learning more about it myself so uh, yeah no you guys are having a really in-depth conversation about um ammunition uh, I must tell you that I highly support you just going to carrytrainer.com, clicking on the Superbell tab. That will get you 5% off. Superbell is awesome. It is good ammo. And now they've got the price. Like the nine ball is like uh, 180 something dollars per thousand. Wow, and that's not bad. Yeah. Best QC in the business. Yeah. I still have that box. I should have brought that. What was it? Oh, the Remember old one. Box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. found that old, old box. The 357. Oh, you're talking about Superbell, are you? Super okay. Bell. Okay. You're talking about Superbell. Yeah. That's what they're talking about. I don't know. I'm seeing, I'm seeing all kinds of names. Where'd that other question go? I was about to click on. You can see that. Uh, you can't see that? Not right now. Oh. It's like at a weird angle. Oh, sorry. Yeah. What's that about? What's the best way to hide a 2,000 round purchase from your wife? Put it on your girlfriend's credit card, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. That was the first thing yeah, that right. came to mind. <laughs> 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 That's My cool. wife is upstairs right now going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's got the Mickey doll. The little I know. Doll. My wife and I never had that kind of a relationship. So I never yeah. had to think about that. Probably stuff. being sarcastic, dude. It's 365 funny. XL. Uh, on my hip right now, dude, is like the 365 it. XL. That's it's nice. a great gun. But you know what? I don't really want to talk about that stuff. Friendly fire enabled on all ranges for you gamers. Ooh, geez. Whoa. Jeez. Whoa. Whoa. That seems, that's pretty heavy. Were they having a discussion in the con? What's going on with that? Hey, where'd that come from? Yeah, friendly fire. So last time I'm we kind were... of a gamer, man. I'm, I'm a wannabe gamer. Do you? Like, yeah. how so? I, I want to shoot competitively more, but but I'm just you hate busy showing with up at matches and no, I'm busy no. with everything else, oh. and it's always on like Wednesday night. Yeah, well, I'm in I got classes Wednesday night. You know, the only time that I don't have classes is Sunday, and not many people have matches on Sunday. There's one in Oak. Les was telling me about one in. I don't uh, like doing anything much at night. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of, I get like I got up today. You're like, like an old five. man. No, I just I, you know, I've, I've spent most of my working career working in the daytime. Yeah, that's true. And by the time it's supper time, like I'm ready to take yeah, my yeah. boots or shoes off. And, yeah. Plus, you guys work hard, man. Instructions. No you problem. know what I mean, though. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah, by like, the time you get home, though, you're ready to just chill. Yeah. But most is, of my ma most matches are, you know, Saturday or during the week at night because people do work these at 10 30 on yeah, Tuesdays. yeah right. <laughs> hey, dude, listen, I, I teach jujitsu 10 to 11 11 to 12 so one o'clock would be perfect yeah you know and then yeah. i got to be back at the gym at four so if you could do something between one and three i'm down i'll go shoot a match and then i'm out of the gym at nine at night so if you mm -hmm. do something at nine at night i'm down i'll be there but that's my monday through friday schedule 
Saturday um, at the gym until one or two, unless we're competing like this Saturday, we got guys competing. So who knows when I'll be done with that. And then, so Sunday would be my day to go shoot. So I know um, there's a IDPA match uh, at the Aurora Sportsman's Club, like third Sunday during the summer, I'll go during the you. season. Yeah, I'll shoot that. I'll go out there and shoot that. Mm -hmm. Why not? You know, but yeah, the whole gamer versus whatever. I don't get into that. No. Run the gun. Just run the track. gun, dude. It's always going to come down to the fundamentals, right? Yeah. Like, see the sights, see what you need to see, press the trigger, keep running, keep making hits. Tenth gun. Is that the same guy? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's funny. I like that. Team. I, last time we were chatting, and you know, we've been at this for an hour and 15, so I don't want to keep at it too much longer because we could just keep talking and talking and talking. We were talking about one of the main things that I kept noticing was we had people that want to teach and yes. they're not teaching and they want to because they either uh, like the idea of that being their career or it's their goal is to it's be a firearms or combatives instructor. You like that coffee? I like that percolator coffee. Man. Oh, we're that having stuff's awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna that give stuff's this stuff's really to good. Yeah. That stuff's really I good. Just, this is what we're drinking. This is the S12 blend from yeah. our buddy at Armor. I coffee. just finished off my last uh, bag of that. There you go. <laughs> make sure you don't take it back <laughs> uh, i would have I would gladly oh that's take awesome that. man thank you take that one um so but do you guys want to teach yeah and so like or gals uh, guys gals whoever and it kind of makes me um the first question that always comes to mind when people ask me like how do i get into that it, it's like for me it found me i didn't like one day say like oh, i'm gonna teach this yeah but uh like the first thing that always pops up is well, what are you going to teach mm -hmm. and like have you developed enough knowledge on it yeah. well i just want to teach the basic stuff dude nothing crazy and that's always like, well, ah, but, like that that's is, the, but that is everything yeah that's everything that's everything right, right, there. right yeah like the difference between me and less is less can see what he needs to see and manage the trigger and his reloads and his movement at a high level in under high stress mm -hmm. like people don't understand that part of it like mm -hmm. the difference for me walking out in front of a hundred people to fight versus 5,000 people to fight. Like the fight is the fight. That's the easy part, but managing your nerves hmm. and the overwhelming sensations and noises and everything, that's a whole other game. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's the thing. Like a guy like Les can do all that stuff at the highest level under the highest pressure mm -hmm. with everybody looking. Whereas a guy like me is going to struggle doing it at Alpha during a USPSA match right. with 20 guys looking. Yeah, we don't want to talk about that pee problem that you had the last time. <laughs> that's why I wear dark pants. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's a, but, see, but that's the thing, right? It's still just the fundamentals. Yeah. You know, I don't even like to use the word basic because then people think there's something else. Right. It's the fundamentals executed at a high level is the difference between somebody who's just a beginner and an advanced. Mm -hmm. You know, like the advanced guy can punch anybody in the face. The beginner can only hit somebody who's at a low level yeah. and every once in a while, you know, but it's still a jab. Yeah. You know, so. And if you develop that stuff incorrectly, it just makes it harder. Later. Bad fundamentals yeah. lead to all kinds of bad problems, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. later on that take years maybe to repair. So well, that fundamental instructor is the most important. That was why we started this YouTube channel. Yeah. It was because people would say, I want to come to a class. And I'll just go to this local guy. Not that the local guy isn't awesome, but they'll say, I'm going to go to, to Bob, the local guy that's going to teach me the basics. And I go, well, what is he teaching? Yeah. And then I see the person and I'd be like, ah, you know, like that now I got right. I Instead of just showing you this, now I have to go and unpack well, all that junk. That's why I like teaching the foundations classes at my gym. Mm -hmm. I love teaching those classes because I know, not that my guys don't get it right, but I know they got it. Yeah. Like I know they have what I want them to have, you know? So like tonight is the more advanced classes, you know, once my, my guys got there to teach for what you cover for me, you know, I will, I'm not as worried about those guys because they're on the right path mm -hmm. because I know how their foundation was laid. So they're on the right path. They're just building their individual expression of the art now. Right. They're just like playing or whatever. But in those beginning years, like it's so important to have those fundamentals just, the nuances and the particulars, the, the, the things that make those work, you know, if you don't have that, like, you know, 
it's like telling somebody just grip the gun harder. Well, that's not really what how that works. Yeah. You know, or just, you know, press the trigger straight back. Sometimes it's not how that works. Right. You know, right. so, you know, learning how to to convey those fundamentals, that's really that's crucial, man. That can't be overlooked. Like people are like, oh, it's just an NRA safety or whatever the NRA certification is for basic level pistol, whatever they call it. NRA um, pistol. Yeah, the yeah. Mm -hmm. And people who think that's just garbage, I think are missing how crucial, like you said, you know, how crucial that beginning is because later on they show up at a at a class that's running and gunning and just banging and this guy's making some mistakes and maybe doing some some critical things, you know, that just aren't right and mm -hmm. now we don't have time to fix it. Mm -hmm. Well, that that falls back on dude who took it kind of lackadaisical attitude about it. Like, Oh, I'm just teaching the basics. Right. It doesn't really matter. No, it matters. I remember learning to box a little bit and uh, being kind of lazy, pulling my hands in, but I was always just hitting a bag or mitts. Yeah. So there was one no traffic. And all of yeah. a sudden one day dude slapped me in the side of the head, like, yeah. like as hard as he could. And I'm like, what? You're like, why did you do that? Yeah, like, right? and he's like, well, you weren't, your hand wasn't there, yeah. but you know, and I'm like, all, it, 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 you know, like all <laughs> nose is all, <laughs> but, because in my head, like I was, yeah. I was boxing, man. Like, no, yeah. I wasn't boxing. I'm I was just pawing. I was just pawing it. it. I'm it. And, and, and then, like, all of a sudden, oh, now, yeah. but I had spent months hitting bags and stuff or mitts, thinking this is somehow like making it's me better. Translate. Yeah. But just something uh, as simple as like you know coming back and straight protecting up, straight my back. Face. Yeah, like but what like, does Bryce call oh, it? That makes sense yeah, now. Yeah, like Bryce says, having your offense and defense be one thing. Yeah, you know, so the way you throw is also defense built yeah. in. Yeah, you know? yeah. But yeah, as far as like the the question, like to dive into that a little more, I'm I was thinking about this the other day because I try to do like the little um, attitude uh, gratitude exercise every day. I try to think of three or four things I'm grateful for as soon as I get out of bed usually before I get out of bed. And um, and one of the things I was thinking about was I thought, because I had a guy ask me, like, hey, um, how do I get into teaching? Like, I want to teach. Uh, I want to work at the site specifically. And um, I want to teach and that kind of thing. And I started thinking about it. I thought, I've never applied for a job other than the police department. But I've never apply for a job you haven't mm. no no man they've always just been handed to you basically yeah. not handed but like hey yeah. man would you be interested in yeah so i had a friend go all the way back to high school i had a friend uh say hey acme it's actually a supermarket on mm -hmm. the east coast it's not just bugs bunny right and um or where the wiley coyote gets mm -hmm, torpedoes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's an actual grocery store and, and, and my neighbor said hey uh, we could use somebody like you stocking shelves at night and it would be perfect for school because, you know, you go to school during the day, stock mm -hmm. shelves at night, make pretty good money back then. And um, I said, okay. So I, I showed up at the place. My neighbor basically said to the night shift manager, hey, this is a good kid. I watch him work around his barn, his dad's barn and in the yard all the time. He's a hard worker. Just mm, show him yeah <laughs> daisy dukes what are you talking about i'm not covering these legs up and uh that hay is not gonna stack itself <laughs> you gotta bend over more when you throw that bail so it's just me watching with a cigar that's sick but that's what uh, <laughs> but that's that was how i got that first job from that job i was um the manager again right back to just do what you're asked to do mm -hmm wasn't my job to clean mats the that people walk in on. Yeah. But the night manager came up to me and said, Hey, if you have a minute, can you clean the mats? Cause whoever was supposed to do it, didn't do it. And it's gotta be ready for opening tomorrow morning. And uh, I go, like, yeah, man, I I'm finished with my aisle. We each night we got three aisles to stock. I would always finish before everybody else. Cause competitive. Yeah. yeah. Got a race. It's a race, whether they know it or not. And plus they're older. They're like, <laughs> Fuck that kid. <laughs> if I don't do all my aisles, he'll come over and help me because yeah, he's yeah, a yeah, dumbass. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so, you know, me being a dumb kid and highly competitive, I would think it's like, 
me showing them what's up when I would go over and finish stocking their aisles too, because they can't keep up with me. But in reality, they were just playing me. Mm -hmm. But um, so I'm like, yeah, man, I'll, I'll go do that. And Tom Sawyer in your ass. Yeah, pretty much, right? Uh -huh. So I went over there and I, I'm scrubbing the the mats, you know, brushing them and scrubbing them. And some dude walks up to me and says, "Hey, I've been here a couple of times. You always work like this." I'm like, yeah. You know, because my dad will beat me if I don't, right, you know. Right, right. And uh he goes, Here, he hands me a business card, it's precision auto body. He goes, if you want to make money, like they pay you by the hour here, but if you want to make money, I'll pay you by the job. Mm. And I said, Oh, I don't even know what that means. So then he explained to me, he goes, Well, he goes, just call me tomorrow. I don't want to take don't want to get you in trouble. Right. So I call him the next day and he says, um, I have a deal with the dealerships around here. We detail the cars when they come off the trucks. So when the cars come off the trucks and they have, um, we bring them off the trucks, they have road dirt and all that kind of stuff on them. So we detail them before we put them on the lot. Every car you detail is like 35 bucks. I think at that nice. time I was crushing it. I was knocking a few out a day. Oh yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I would go out there and just go ape on those things, man. And just, just crush them. Daisy Dukes. Yeah, Daisy Pour Dukes. Some shirt tied sugar up. Man. <laughs> just scrubbing. I would do the hair fling uh -huh. when uh -huh. I had hair. I can you see know? it. And uh so, but from that came the next, came the next, mm -hmm. came the next. And then the construction guy would saw me working. It's like, hey, you know, I worked with my uncles and all those guys my whole life doing construction, but never like, you know, I was faithful always, in little things. Yeah. And just on and on and on. On and then the way I got to the site was Herschel Davis and John Bowman remembered me from PTI. Mm -hmm. um, and those guys, um, um, one of those guys sent me a message on the computer, car to car, squad car. Back then you could talk to like other agencies and stuff, car to car computer. Sends me a message, says, hey, would you like to come to the site and work as an assistant instructor for a summer? And... I want to say this is like 99, 2000. And I said, yeah, of course. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> always say yes. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, I'll do it. And I go out there and it's just, I mean, assistant instructor is just staple those targets over there. Yeah. Go paint that steel. And, um, and if you have some time, empty the garbage cans, you know, and make sure the water coolers are filled up for everybody. And so that's what I did. And then from that, to the next to the next mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it was never i'm larry lindeman doing the security close protection work bodyguard work whatever you want to call it larry lindeman made a phone call larry lindeman called me said hey I, I i want you to come work do some stuff for me i did some work somebody saw me work they asked me to come work you know what i mean so yeah. then it branched into other people and other things same thing with the firearm stuff like you know everything i've ever I've never called anybody and said, Hey, can I come work for you? Or do you have anything? Or would you, you know, put not in a... that there's anything wrong with that. No, no, your no. I'm is, not saying that. My point, point is, no, say, I'm just saying your yeah, point yeah. is you didn't have to because your work ethic opened doors. And, and like, like, you know, what, what's the passage in the Bible about, you know, it, yeah, yeah. Your gift makes room for itself. Oh, right. Yeah. That. Faithful in little things, but that's part of it. Yeah. Right. And then you, if you're faithful in those little things and then your gift will make room for itself. Like if you, demonstrate good character and you're genuine and you really want to help people. That's why you're doing this. Like, yeah. When I started doing this at the site, all I thought was I'm just trying to make, cause I wasn't really aware of the private sector mm -hmm. training side of things. All I could think was, I just want to help make cops and military dudes that come through here safe, mm -hmm. better, whatever it takes. Yeah. So does that mean paint steel so they can keep working? I'm painting steel, dude. This is a mindset thing that totally bastardized word that we use now, but that's a mindset. That's a mindset of a good instructor. That's like, you know, you're what you're talking about or a good employee or a good person. This is all my, like, these are the makeup of yeah, yeah. one's Bushido. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not, yeah, for sure. it's not just like follow these steps and you'll get phone calls. Like this was the way you, yeah, that's just it what is the way you felt and yeah. feel. Yeah. yeah, and it's still to this day. Authenticity, like we said earlier. Yeah, and that's how doors get open for me. Like, you know, you asked me to come to S12. You know, like I didn't. And you said, can I bring my Daisy Dukes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, but I didn't like, but I wasn't like, hey, Mickey, you know, I want right. to come teach you your thing, man. Right. I want to come do something of your thing. I was just like, what do you need me to do? 
you know, like I don't even know what I'm doing. So yeah, I said just we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. So just come here and do something. Look important. First thing I did was tell everybody I'm an instructor. If you're, <laughs> yo, 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 shitheads, or my instructor shirt, instructor shirt with the instructor on the back too. But no, but but I mean that's the thing. Like you know, and then through that, I met like all the people at S12 were freaking awesome. Yeah, you know the from the people that attend to the people that teach. You know, wait till I tell you later who's coming. Nice, it's gonna be cool. But that's the thing. But it's like you meet all these cool people. So if you want uh, my thoughts on that, or as far as if you want those opportunities, if you want chance mm. the chance to do that kind of stuff, is never say no. Like always say yes if somebody asks you to do something. Like within reason. Within well, what I mean is hey, like Paul, if, I've got a hot tub outside, and we've already done that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you lied. <laughs> that was not a soap. <laughs> um, but uh, but there's like but you know what's funny? Know, time out. There will be somebody that comments on this, if not tonight in a year, and be like, those guys are idiots. Like everything was homoerotic, yes. and I'll respond with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing later? Um, but but that's the thing. Like, see, just don't turn down when somebody comes to you and says, "Hey, you want to work?" Mm -hmm. You know, don't turn it down. If so, even if you feel like it's beneath you, um, and I've had those moments, right? My ego kicks in. Um, I'm Paul fucking sure. I've well, got well, more than one shirt that says instructor. On exactly. It. Well, I've had you know those moments where you know, like it, when I was in police work where. Um, they would say, Hey, can you help so and so teach whatever the proficiency shoot is for mm -hmm. this this time around? And I would feel like I should be teaching it, you know, or you know, you have those moments, sure. you know, and you just gotta fight those, man. Don't let that Ego. consume. Yeah, don't yeah. let it consume you because it's not good for you. And then out of those moments or out of those times, I had some great experiences, you know, and, and made some good connections with people that mm -hmm. then later on were good for me. Yeah, you know. Um, but and that's the thing. Just say yes to things, even if it looks like a lot of work. It and it might be a lot of work, but you just never know where it's going to lead you mm -hmm. to, or what. It, even if it doesn't take you to some like, I don't even know what a national stage would look like. You know, like, like. You know. I always like to say, six like success begets more success, and you can't have that until you're like you're talking about grinding it out in the grocery store or on the detail lot like that is a success for an 18 year old oh yeah whatever see my age. friends were making like back then 335 an hour and you're making you know it's like 335 335 yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 but i was working yeah I mean, yeah i was tearing myself up sure but um but that's the thing you know if i would have looked at that guy and been like i don't know man you know, right, I kind of got a good thing going here. Yeah, I'm doing all right smoker here. Smoker people, let yeah. me help them finish. Exactly. Their I'll just keep working for three thirty-five an hour, and I'm doing all right. Mm -hmm. And what you're telling me sounds like a lot of work, and it's not glamorous. It's not cool. Yeah. You know, like I'm gonna be scrubbing bird poop and other stuff off of a car. Like that's not cool. You know, but uh, the same with teaching at the site. You know, teaching at the site back then. You know, like I'm gonna be painting steel and stapling targets. You know, and I completed my Illinois law enforcement state firearms instructor course, bro. <laughs> you know? like, but you know, but, but I didn't even touch a gun. Sometimes I didn't have a gun on me, you know, because I was just being a gopher all day, doing what needed doing. Yeah, but man, you get you learn so much about all the other things too that need to be done in a business. Like those targets aren't going to order themselves. You know, and those target stands that get shot up by guys who can't seem to keep them in between the pole. Like those stands aren't going to replace themselves. Right. Somebody's got to do that. Mm -hmm. So at now at this juncture in my training career to, to replace those things, it's just like, yeah, hey, it's got to be done. Let's do mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It's not it's something to think about. Yeah. I was out on the range with a friend of mine, uh, Corey Zillick, who is a retired seal from uh damn neck dead, dead brew guy. He, um, he and I were out at uh, uh, the sawmill, which is uh, Scott Puckett's place a few weeks ago. And there's a bunch of guys out there. There was a SWAT team out there and a fucking rain and the wind and the range is a mess. Sure. All the other guys started raining. So they left all their stuff and went in. Yeah. And it wasn't that they weren't going to clean it up, but all the cardboard blowing all over and papers everywhere. And you know, sure. the place was just a mess. So we did what we needed to do. And then 
not patting myself on the back, but we both just started cleaning all the shit up and we were done. And then we were going to eat and go home. And he looks at me and goes, do we leave it better than we found it? And I was like, yeah, man. And I smiled like I had, I, I don't know him that well, but like, that's my dude, man. Like yeah. you didn't, and you were, nobody was out there. Same mindset. Nobody, yeah. Nobody yeah. was, nobody was like policing us to say, mm-hmm. Hey, you guys are going to do a good job. We could have left all that shit. Yeah. It took us 10 minutes, you know, it right. wasn't a big deal, but like, that's his way was did we leave it better than we found it and it wasn't hey mick we're good people you know right. we left it better it was a matter of fact we will leave it better than we found yeah. it we did okay cool let's go have dinner yeah, you know, yeah. and that was the that's end that's the thing it's an internal thing yeah you know it's like this is what i do yeah you know i'm not doing it for anybody but myself what kind of man do you want to be yeah that too dwight says who's a student of ours that he saw you do the uh grip mechanics on uh, that last s12 video we put up and it was the best presentations he has seen on the topic cool thank you and he feels it'll have a great impact on shoot improving his shooting awesome thank you yeah most of that pretty much my entire curriculum presentation on that stuff can be found online people have um, videoed it youtubed it whatever and posted it up over the years and that goes back kind of to the you know what you were talking about where the People were like, oh, if this instructor's in my class, is he going to steal my material and stuff like that? And, um, I kind of feel like if you put it out there and you let people share it and um, you're trying to do good work, which is the point of letting it be shared, is that so people can learn and see it and benefit from it? If somebody were to steal your stuff, I think there'd be enough people out there who would call them out. There'd be enough people out there to go, hey, dude, mm-hmm. like, I know who originally came up with this or i know who yeah. originally taught this and why are you trying to like play it off like you know what i mean like i mm-hmm. never fear that because i just feel like enough of what i've done is out there for everybody to see and i and i talk to people all the time like like if people email me or message me or whatever and ask me questions like i do the best i can to to answer them you know i don't hold I do anything back too. yeah everybody i know does that every every yeah. body in my circle does that yeah, it's weird. I have guys sometimes like will tell me like somebody called them and they're like, hey, you can pay me for a private phone consultation. I'm like, what? Like, I mean, I get it. If you want to take up hours of my yeah, life, like hours, thing, yeah. But it takes me 10 minutes to answer the question. Right. Yeah. And you, there's a fine line. Somebody made a comment about your work ethic can be um, uh, used against you by like a slave driver. Sure. And that's sure. But then you got to like have a goal if you're not going to let somebody abuse you like that and that that's like right. a whole nother topic but like of course you can't let people call and it, it could if you get 50 people calling you for 10 minute questions a day you got no time for anything but so you have to be able right. to yeah, you gotta manage your that. time and manage yeah manage, manage your, that that's what copy and paste is for too yeah a lot of times no i'm not to like downplay eggplant emoji <laughs> yeah. <Enter. laughs> yeah, with, with an okay sign and a finger pointing yeah but i think sometimes you know if people ask similar questions you know you just copy and paste and you know yeah. just say and i'll tell them i'll be straight with them like hey i'm just going to send you what i sent to somebody else who asked a similar question hopefully this will answer it and if it doesn't then they'll come back to you but yeah i think yeah people can manipulate that work ethic <clears throat> no doubt about that but i think at the same time I would rather not um, learn, unlearn how to work. I would rather not dumb down my work capacity. There's actually, so there was actually a discussion about a a country, right? And the country had been under uh, colonial rule for a long time. So the people to protest would just slow down. Hmm. So they did everything slow and slow and slower right so repairing a bit they did half ass what century everything. Is this? it was recent 1950s 60s oh, okay uh and so say we're gonna hang that door they wouldn't hang it level they just hang it right okay. door shuts maybe maybe not <laughs> you know <laughs> and, uh, but you got a door okay you ask me for a door you got a door you know and uh just things like that well com- you know Take that over a couple generations, and now you have a generation that's never known anything but that. But now that country is running itself, mm-hmm. not very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, because Garbage. who's running it? People that don't know how to do anything. Yeah, because they, rather than maintain their work capacity, rather than maintain a mindset of you know what, 
Things aren't always going to be this way. Yeah, when people say to me, don't work too hard. You know, hey, man, good seeing you. Don't work too hard. I'm always like, fuck you. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah that's like my phone, right? What does it say? It literally says work hard all and, over the screen. And nobody, nobody cares. cares. Nobody cares. Yeah, work that's harder. true. And that, that's the thing. Um, so I, I constantly think that, like, I'm not trying to outwork anybody else, but I just want to outwork myself from yesterday. Mm-hmm. Do more than I did yesterday. Do a better job than I did yesterday in, in everything. You know? Does that ever become like a, a, a futile effort, though? You know, where you like, where it becomes, it, let me rephrase that, and this is rhetorical in nature. What happens is that then it does, it, we never will be good enough. So right. then, like, you are you ever satisfied? No. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think you are either. Like you can't be. No, you've always been self-employed. You've always, you know yeah. what I mean. Like guys, like guys like us, so to speak, like had have always. Like I worked as a police officer, but I always had two or three side jobs. Mm-hmm. You know, construction, whatever it was, always something hustling to do whatever. You mm-hmm. know, um, I don't think you ever can reach that point where good enough occurs Mm -hmm. you know um i think there is the danger like larry lindeman talks about and uh some other guys have talked about like don't let great be the enemy of good like good enough is good enough sometimes yeah and and, and so like like the guy who's perpetually writing a book but Mm -hmm. it's not good enough it's Mm -hmm. not great yeah 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 trying to always refine it to when you read it you know like hey can you proofread it and i proofread i'm like dude send this out now right you know, like it's it's good. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. No, there's Chapter some things 14, I got really... to tweak. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, yeah. it's it's awesome right now. It's better than anything I've read on the subject. And they won't put it out. And then, sure enough, somebody else, because that's how it works, right? Somebody else is also Nails working it. on something. Yeah. They put it out and it's and it kills it. And then that know? person says, I was working on that for 10 yeah, years. Exactly. Yeah, but you never produce. You never put it out. Yeah. You got to do it. Yeah. Uh, we got to pull the trigger. But yeah, I think. And I, and I think we owe it to, because classes are not inexpensive. Mm-hmm. I always think about that. I, I remember, so like, it's kind of like being a musician. Like, when you can't afford anything, nobody wants to give you anything. You're like, you're scraping, you're playing. I was a drummer, mm-hmm. you know, and my friends are musicians and stuff. And you're playing like garbage drum sets and mm-hmm. stuff to just try to get by Duct taped up heads because yeah, yeah. you played them out yeah and then you play a, a bigger gig and some guy comes up to you and is like hey you know what do you think about a deal with our, our drumsticks or whatever it might be and i remember like talking to my my kid's mom you know my first wife i remember talking to her about taking classes outside of law enforcement and paying for classes paying for training and being like hey you know how can we afford this? Can we budget for this? Well, I got this, you know, I got this um, remodeling gig coming up. You know, I'm going to replace some doors and do a bathroom. And so it's going to pay about 3000 bucks. So can I take a thousand of that, buy ammo, travel and pay for a class? You know, I remember those days. Mm-hmm. And so the kind of the rub is now that I'm in a position where, you know, I don't have those expenses of little kids and sure. all that stuff, right? Where I could pay for a class. People ask me to just yeah. come take just my show class. up. I'll give you your ammo. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. come take my class, and which is great. Like I'm not like thank you. Like I appreciate it, man. And um and and in some ways that's like a a thank you from them to me for whatever I've contributed, mm-hmm. right? But I try to keep that in mind when I teach. Yeah. Like these people were might have been in the same boat I was in. Yeah. And maybe they're not. Maybe they maybe they're well to do. You know. But either way. That money didn't just appear. Yeah. You know, like they did something to make that money. Yeah, value. And they took their time, which is even more valuable. They took their time from family or other things to come here. Mm -hmm. You know, the travel, all that goes into that to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Fuck, man. I got to make it happen for them. Yeah. I'm going to go all out. Yeah. Like, um, and same with you, right? Like at the end of the night, we both are in the same boat, right? After teaching for a day. Voice is shot. Yeah, you're smoked. You know, you're smoked. You're exhausted. You know, but you still got to be up and at it because they want to have dinner, mm-hmm. which is part of the experience. You yeah. know, and it's like, man, I just want to go to my room 
take a shower. Dude, we got to do shots. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Cocaine for <laughs> real. Cocaine. Just joking. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. It's like, all right, man. Well, I know what it's like to be in that position. I know what it's like to to come to a class and have a bad experience. I know what it's like to be at a class where it was mediocre, mm -hmm. you know, and I never want that to happen. Yeah. I never want anybody to walk out of a class that I'm either assisting or I'm the primary where they walk out of that class and they're like, mm, I don't know about this, man. This was a waste of my weekend. There's a great, um, great book called the Nordstrom way. Yeah. So you probably read it. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, if you guys don't know what Nordstrom's is, it's an old school, department store like the Marshall Fields or Macy's and the owner was a fanatic about customer service great mm -hmm. stories in there like uh, shoe salesmen and these people earn good money these salespeople there like we found out Paul was only in town for a week and he wanted these shoes and uh, they didn't have them in stock so he found Paul's address, got the shoes from another store and had them like delivered by yeah. taxi at 10 o'clock at night yeah. to get to the guy before he left, like right. providing. And one of their models was always to provide more value than the customer always asked deliver. or expected. Always yeah. over deliver was yeah. Nordstrom's thing. Yeah. yeah. Always over deliver. Yeah. That's the thing. I want them to walk, you know, like, like S12, right? Like, I don't think anybody left there feeling like they didn't get everything they should have got. I hope not. There's no way. Yeah. There's no way. But Gourmet food. Start the day out with group exercise, you know, like that communal. That's code. Yeah, that's <laughs> code. That is definitely code. <laughs> and start the day out with that stuff and conversations and hanging out with cool people and shooting guns and learning how to yeah. fix medical emergencies of all types. Mm -hmm. That was incredible. Mm -hmm um hand-to-hand -hand stuff you know you had z and scott you, and those guys in there i was in there you, yeah, yeah i was yeah. in there you know we're doing our best to prep these guys for whatever they might encounter in that world how could anybody i mean i'm biased obviously right i always want to think i did an awesome job and everybody i'm associated with does an awesome job like i i always think that like you or any like craig any of the instructors sbg guys any instructors i'm associated with i'm always convinced they're the very best like well thank you I second to none that. i'm always convinced of that and and maybe that's some sort of bias on my part but it's just um i always feel like you know i look around the room and i'm like man i gotta work harder like these dudes are good instructors that, i feel that all the time like being around you or z or other guys i know that's and it's not a negative thing like uh no it's motivating yeah it's not an yeah. ego thing like i want to be better than paul or z or whoever it is it's uh okay that like you said it's motivating it, it, and it's part of it is if he can i can because i know he's no better than me yeah, yeah. not in a two uh, arms two legs yeah 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 one brain yeah 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 and yeah. I've seen him with his shirt off, so if he can fucking do it, I totally can. <laughs> right. I saw him in the shower. <laughs> Not impressed. <laughs> just, it's just a joke. <laughs> but, just kidding. I was no, impressed. That, that, I think, is a problem. You know, guys are talking about, somebody brought up, like, should how many instructors should I see? And now that's a different question, maybe a better for another time. Mm -hmm. But who are you attracted to? Are you attracted yeah. to people that what are you trying push to you? And uh, yeah, what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. Too? That's the other side of it. Yeah, you're you know? just if you're trying to like go, I've got a book in the other room that's that thick with documents from instructors that I've gone to. And oh, I yeah. look through it sometimes and I think, cool, 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 waste of time, waste of time, waste of time, waste yeah, of time, waste sure. of time. Because I just wanted to go and like say I went or yeah, do yeah. it. And I think, man, how much better would I have been if I went walking that day or, right. you know, went. Yeah, yeah. and did push-ups or yeah, exactly. you know, dry fired what i it, but yeah. but i did that because i was like you know checking the sure checking the, yeah there's that process yeah yeah and but i think yeah i think it's what you're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. you know like how you reach that point of diminishing returns too you know where you've taken so many classes and you've got so many um opposing points of view hmm. maybe I don't really think there's too many opposing points of view out there anymore. I don't really think, I think everything's kind of boiled down to some essential things, but yeah, the last 10 years has really changed a lot of YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Social media, things like that, where there's really no secrets, nothing's hidden. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have half a brain, you can figure it out, you know? Um, but I just think that 
Yeah, you just get to a point to where it's like, as okay, long as you come to our classes with Yeah, that. yeah, right. Come to class. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think there's this, it's going to come down to what you want to accomplish, mm -hmm. you know, and who you're comfortable with too. There's certain people that are going to rub people the wrong way. Yeah. And there's other people that people are just going to click with. And that was I definitely rub some people the wrong way. I'm not in a joking way. I mean, I do. I mean, I can be abrasive and I'm coarse and I don't fuck around. You know. Well, the well, I think too, people don't always get like your humor, and I don't think it means stupid. like that. I don't think it. I don't think it's kind of the, you know. I mean, he's he's an asshole, but once you get to know him, it's not so bad. I don't think it's that. It's just the first time I met you. I don't remember where was the first time I met you. We were out at one of the farms, I think. I thought it was at Alpha. Yeah, maybe. I don't remember. Somewhere. It was at somebody's class. Was it Chuck Haggard's class? I don't know. Somebody like that. What's your point? What's your in? What's your yeah, yeah. insult? Just yeah, here comes, here comes the insult. <laughs> no, no, but I remember the class. I remember going, uh, I remember thinking, man, either this guy's got like no social cues or there's something wrong with this dude. Because <laughs> you said something, man. You said something that was just off the wall to this other guy. And I just remember him looking at you like, the fuck? You know, it was just That's one of those me testing people. That was one of those weird moments. <laughs> and then I was like, but then I realized you were just fucking around. You weren't serious. And then it was funny. And then I was like, oh, okay, got it. I got it. It's his, it's his sense of humor. And now I get it. You know, so then, then I was like, all right, I like this dude. And Les is like, he's a funny guy, right? I'm like, yeah, he's a funny dude. I'm digging him. Because at first, but that first moment, I was like, whoa, we're, there's like some kind of like, throwdown about to happen here you thought no i i thought the guy was going to push back like who the fuck are you you know kind of thing i don't remember what i possibly was. even say it was something about his gear man i don't remember it was something about his gear he had like a he had like one of those hybrid holster type things leathery thing yeah with like the kydex and all that and something was happening with that and you were like well maybe if you you said something it's uh -oh. funny it was something like you spend money on a decent holster instead of something else, or that's something. probably a hundred percent accurate. It was so, it was accurate. <laughs> it was accurate, but it was just. I, funny. I think I knew him. Yeah, I it think it was like, like you knew each other. No, it wasn't stranger no. danger. It was like you knew each other somehow. Because I remember thinking, well, they know each other because I saw them talking. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, man. I can be a dick. Whatever. That's it was not funny. The point. No, you're not a dick. It's just, it's just funny. But that's the thing. Like people are gonna rub each other the wrong way. People are going to, I'm not going to joke. Like, I'm not going to, not to get all weird, like love language shit, but mm -hmm. like people aren't going to speak the same language, even though we're speaking English. Yeah. You know, our communication thing is not happening. And if they go to you or they go to somebody else and they get the information they need to get, cool. Yeah. Right. Mission accomplished. Like, My point in saying that people, that I rub people the wrong way, some people, there are people that there are. I always in, in sales would tell people you're looking for the right person to provide you whatever it is you mm -hmm. need. I'm looking for the right customer. Yeah. And so there is like a mash of, sure. of there's a little bit of, there's that, some right? people that, that like all of our friends that are formal, former spec ops guys. Um, unfortunately, many of them get business just because people want to go do like trim to the green bread. Sure. And there's nothing wrong with that. But no, there's no, cool. but like to me, that's like, yeah, I'm not interested in that perspective of it. But what does the Green Beret know? Yeah. But that but and there's people that want to come train with Paul because it's Paul. And uh, then there's people that want dick jokes and they come to me. I'm dead. I'm so <laughs> Yeah. And I, they come to me. Exactly. Yeah. I just want to be your assistant instructor just to get some good dick he jokes. It's a lot of freaking yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just for that, just for the inappropriate touch. Yeah, I think that we covered a lot of ground. I mean, we're kind of just having like the for those listening. This is literally if we, you and I were driving somewhere in the car, this would be a very similar discussion. Yeah. You know, I don't. Nothing here was contrived by any means. I don't know if this went the same Did way I any, thought about it. Miss any questions? I'm sure we missed a tons of questions. Sorry, guys. That's all right. I mean, you know. So here's the other thing, dudes. You can. We'll check back in here and try to respond to some of these. Um, thanks, Coy. Coy was at our event. Yeah, I remember that name. Oh, I busted your nuts, Jeff. Sorry. First class, first shot, mag, falls out of the gun. Mickey, my name is not Mickey with an IE, by the way. Busted my nuts, but taught a system to prevent. Well, yeah, I mean, that, well, that wasn't being rude, though. I mean, it was just for fun from your perspective. 
<laughs> well, at least you're not like grabbing guys' guns and throwing them. And... That's happened. That has happened. Yeah, that's happened. So I've been in a class where a guy threw a guy's magazines. He threw his magazines. I was in a class once where a dude took the magazines out, dropped them in the mud, and stomped on them into the mud to show them because the what was happening was guys were not um, letting their mags free yeah. and whatever. So his way of showing them that they were durable was to drive them into like six inches of mud in a cow pasture that we were training on. And I'm oh like, and I'm like covering my stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, get away from me. And, and then, and then he's like, see, and they're still good. And he had a Glock. He took it out. He put the, the guy's mag that he had stopped yeah. in. Let me show you. And it wouldn't feed. <laughs> <laughs> he was so like he was showing them like the, oh, that's yeah, it was awesome. awesome. There was that's a, so a, awesome. a piece of pea gravel like pushed the round down yeah, and jammed it all up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. We were just like, I was just like, oh mm -hmm. man, exactly. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, like all the little holes like, that you can see the the brass through yeah. at the back were all solid mud. With mud. Yeah, I was like, dude, that was a dick like, move. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I don't mess with. I think you can guide people on their gear selection equipment selection but i think you can't lecture them or demean them on it because who threw a gun don't who but like what was it like was it like a dangerous gun or was it keep breaking so the guy was like screw this something just... like that yeah from my understanding an incident was that it was a gun that kept jamming oh so he's so just like you don't need that yeah, <laughs> like that's how you get punched yeah. yeah that's not a good idea um but that's the thing like it's it's like I think William April talked about it. At a certain point, we have to respect the emotional attachment people have to their decisions yeah. and their choices, yeah. right? And so if somebody comes out there with a Ruger P89, you know, or whatever it's called, the nine millimeter, you know, yeah. the big yeah, yeah, the boat big anchor gun. One. Man, I had a guy bring one of those to class at the site. Too. I remember those, yeah. Yeah, and he brought one to the class. And, uh, you know, my personal thoughts on that gun. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Bless you. My my personal thoughts on that pistol are are mine, but this guy brought this pistol here. Yeah, you don't know if his dad gave it to him as his dying part. Yeah, right? Gift yeah, or... yeah. I don't know how this guy got this thing, yeah. but he's got it. He's here. Let's go to work. Yeah. You know, let me optimize whatever his systems are for running this thing. Let me optimize those. You know, mm -hmm. and um, make and then sure... snicker about him later. Yeah, I'll make fun of him. You know, <laughs> but yeah, but that's the thing. And um, I remember I was in a class. As a student, and we had a guy there. He was a um, he was a special special operations dude. Was also in the class as a student. And a guy standing there, and he's got this belt. And the guy comes over that this the spec ops guy walks over to this guy. And he's like, "Your belt's gonna fall off." And the guy just kind of looks at him. He's like, "You're gonna have to put a rubber band on it. That that belt's garbage. Those things always fall apart." And the guy's like, "Well, it's the only belt I got." You know, it was like some, it was like one of those Uncle Mike's with the okay. old. Oh, welcome. yeah, 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 yeah. That like dude ended up, Walmart. Uh, that dude ended up burning that class down. He could shoot. He could shoot. He blew that dude I away. think I have one of those he belts He smoked somewhere. that dude. Like he, he, I don't know if he intentionally did it, but they ended up, you know, near each other. And it was one of those classes where we were shooting a lot of steel and it was ding, 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 ding. Just letting him know. Holster, and that dude would still was, be like, pow, 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 pow. You know what I mean? It was just. One of those things where, you know, first off, you don't know who you're talking to, mm -hmm. right? And then second, um, he's found a way to make it work, man. Yeah. So let's just rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. Just, it's not always about the yeah. gear. Can't be about the gear, man. Have you seen my gi? I like that gi. I'm just saying. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Just yeah. like you, know, you yeah, show yeah, right. up, you show up, and gi. then I pull my white belt out. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, remember the class with Super Dave um, out there at Nate's place? Like, I think it was like the second class he did out there where he whips out. That Glock, stock Glock, stock sights, mm -hmm. 50 yards from the holster, 2.5 seconds, yeah. center punch the target. Yeah. All right. It's not about the gear. Yeah. You know, the same with Les. Les take, could take a standard 92 and just burn it down. And I'm sitting over there going, well, first I got to put this Wilson 12-pound <laughs> spring in. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I need yeah, a yeah, pepperoni yeah. sight on the rear. Yeah, for sure. I don't know if I can work with that factory sight on the front, but I'll do the best I can. Yeah. You know, and I'm or you know, I'm gonna need an eleven pound recoil spring and Wilson fluted recoil guide rod. I mean, I need to trick it a little bit before we get out there and run. And Les, meanwhile, would just take it right off the shelf and yeah, just smoke me, just burn me down. You know, and if we were racing, yeah. not if we're fighting, not not crushing if we fight. But no, he's a blue belt, so I got to be careful now. And he's fit. 
Blue belts are dangerous. I yeah. gotta be careful. He's strong. Yeah. So uh, he's yeah. young. Gur. Gur. Then you. Gur. <laughs> Gur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he eats meat, so his colon's poisoned. Uh, so his insides are poisoned. I'm healthy. Would be interesting to see a class for instructors where they're given instruction and other instructors rate them like a Toastmasters club. Tom Gibbons has got yeah, a very prolific. Yeah, he's got a very prolific. Class. I did um, it. Yeah, instructor development program like that. I'll do one at some point, I'm sure, just because it's fun. Yeah, I did the class. It was good, man. It was really good um, to see other instructors at that level present material, mm -hmm. get feedback. You know, you get critiqued by the other instructors. Mm -hmm. Submitting um, yourself to, yeah. to learning. Yeah. You get, Not too cool. Yeah. You get put out there on you know, in it, man. And maybe your great, you know, mind blowing presentation isn't so mind blowing because mm -hmm. guys punch holes in it. Not in a bad way. Right. Yeah. And Tom's, uh, Tom's kind of approach to it is if you're going to, walk away with that in, that instructor certificate I want you to represent well I mean, there's a, certain, a significant not significant there's a percentage of people that don't pass yeah. every class you know there's a percentage of guys that don't and some of them get pretty uptight about it yeah. the class i was in there was two law enforcement instructors like firearms instructors from their agency that didn't pass and they weren't too was it due to that. shooting or doing to their presentation both. or aggregate of both yeah, yeah both because it's an aggregate score so okay. it was both and um, and I think the, that's the point of the standard. That's the point of it. Was it right? to show up. And yeah. You got it. Now you're back to the participation medal. Right. You know, like anybody can get those. Um, it's not our fault. You suck. Yeah. And I think part of it too was the one guy was very the one guy. He had some legit bad habits. Mm. Like who? Back to the foundations, right? Like whoever had taught him in the beginning, either didn't do a good job or he didn't take. Didn't listen. Yeah, he didn't listen and learn. Uh, but the other guy, if I recall correctly, that guy was pretty obstinate. You know, he's pretty, I've been doing it this way for a long time. One of those guys. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like, okay, man, well, I'm here to learn Tom's way. Like Tom teaches thumbs up, you know, shooting a pistol. That's his preferred way. And he wants <laughs> to see you shoot. And obviously, you know, I don't shoot that way. Yeah. Um, but for that class, I did, you know, and um for that class, that's how I shot. That's what he wanted to see, and I wanted to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, he's one of the originals, you know, modern technique guys. And so I wanted to learn how he does things. Yeah. And so that's what I did. So there was some of that going on there with those, some of the people where they were like, hey, I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. And Why are you here? Yeah, why are you here, man? Mm -hmm. we're here. It was in uh, Goshen, Indiana, like we're out in the middle of nowhere, you know, like closest hotel is like 15 miles mm -hmm. you know, closest restaurant like why would you come all the way out in the middle of heat of this to tell tom gibbons you're gonna do it your way yeah it doesn't make sense yeah but it was that's a good course and and like that it's like a toastmasters where you get rated and yeah. critiqued and hot washed that's a know. lot that that to me is much so once you're to the point of teaching that is way more like uh ernest langan is going to come to one of our classes yeah he's awesome but like to me, like, you know, give me a stadium of a thousand, ten thousand people. I'll get on stage and talk about blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Now I got Ernest standing behind me listening to me like, all right. Yeah. You know, like, like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like that, that, that is a, that's a good, a good yeah. tool if you're willing to submit yourself to that. Yeah. That happened at Range Master. Remember uh, this? So, uh, ma Mass. Has gone Good, through, Mike. Mass has gone through two of my blocks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's attended twice. He's talking about Mass Ayub. Yeah, and uh, John Farnham's attended yeah. twice. Um, and then there's there's been a few guys come through that were like heroes of mine. Like I read their articles when mm -hmm. I was in the police academy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I read Farnham's quips. You know, I read all that. Like you have that moment of shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, you know, Sign my bulk. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You have those moments where you're like, holy cow. But then also it's invaluable because they give you legit feedback. Yeah. You know, one of the things Farnham said to me is you need to use the word we more mm. instead of you and me. Right. When you're talking to the crowd, like uh, my. F so 
when did I have an aneurysm? 2014, 2015, uh, Range Master um, in Memphis. John said to me, when you present your material, um, back to the inclusiveness, right, of we are working together on this, like building that rapport. Yeah. Use the word we more. You use the word you guys. So now what you are going to do, now what you are going to do, I am going to show you, I do this, I do that. It needs to be more of, so what we're going to be working on today. Collectively. Yeah, what we're going to be doing today, you know, so that the students don't feel like there's, you know, you peons over here and mm -hmm. I'm over here or anything like that. And, um, you know, and he was cool about how he said it to me. You know, he, he goes, because he told me, he's like, you aren't that way. You know, that's not what you intend to convey, mm -hmm. but that's how it could be taken. Yeah. You know, if you're not careful. Yeah, yeah. You know, he goes, because again, um, at that time I was bigger, more physical looking. And he goes, when you have a certain way of carrying yourself and a certain air and you're a police officer, you're used to directing and telling and all that. It can come off very much as arrogance of you, me, you mm -hmm. know, and you want to avoid that. So you don't shut them off to what you have to share. Cause what you're sharing is good. Yeah. But it's just, so I was like, man, that's cool. Like I never thought of that. You know what I mean? And then I noticed that as soon as I started doing that, there was an immediate change in the tenor of the vibe of my classes. You know what I mean? Like there was an immediate, like less resistance. It was immediate, more of a, we're all here together. We're all here working on the same problem. I don't have the problem solved. I'm solving the problem. We're going to do it together. I dig it. Yeah. It was cool, man. That was good. It creates that. You start to create an atmosphere where people want to learn, where they feel comfortable, where they feel like it's okay to, to ask questions yeah. and not be afraid, like, oh, he's going to bite my head off. Yeah, yeah, there's not that. Yeah. You that and me. Golf. Yeah. yeah. You, me. You know. Jeff, that's not true. I took a picture of you in that shirt. Don't say that. John is my friend. What happened? I have somebody busting balls. Oh. Well, I, we covered a lot of ground here. We've been at it two hours and like two minutes. Um, we'll do it again. If you guys, if you guys found uh, value in any of this, Put it in the comments. Uh, you can get a hold of me or Paul. Share this. You can share this video on your Facebook. Yeah, yeah. You can share a link uh, to your group of people. And the intention never, as we talked about doing this, we wasn't to, <laughs> uh, you know, we're not here trying to sell you classes. It was like, hey, we can, it, there's so many questions about how to go about teaching. And you, we could talk for a hundred years on it and never touch a percent of all of the subject matter but like hey let's let's talk about it and even right now like i learned stuff maybe mm -hmm. you did too yeah for sure uh, we had some laughs and Definitely. that's it i'll do it yeah. again this next week yeah, yeah. i've got uh traveling to do so i'm telling you guys uh that we will do this again uh if you enjoyed it like i said yeah. share it and yeah, we'll, share uh, it. tag me in it too that way i can uh i'll share it and um the, the second week of March, I'll put another one up. I'll uh, I'll get it out there on the interwebs to let you know when it's going to happen, and we'll we'll uh, we'll make it happen. So that said, Billy, I'm glad you en enjoyed it. Uh, put your get your questions together for the next time. We'll talk some more, and we'll 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 do it. Thanks, Paul, for coming out. Yeah, yeah, Appreciate man. Thank you. you. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> I moisturize. <laughs> I have no fingertips. I have no fingerprints from uh, see from jujitsu. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, it's all gets rubbed off from cool. grabbing the gi and stuff. Cool. So I got to moisturize. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate that you spent the time visiting with yeah, us. Very and cool, man. It was awesome. Yeah. I was honored, man. I was honored that it's, you it's decided honor. to drive out and yeah, hot tub time. <laughs> hot tub time. Be good, guys. Don't be dickheads. End.